that music. It is not Friday Night Lights exactly, but it is Saturday afternoon football as football returns to St. Andrews Episcopal School in southwest Austin, Texas. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Vipe Live's coverage of St. Andrews Highlanders football. My name is Merle Bertrand, Vipe Live broadcast director, joined uh, by Mr. Joshua Blanche. Josh, how are you? Doing good. How about yourself? Hey, it's football. Yeah, it's, it's great. football, and, you know, it's been a long time football uh, wait for St. Andrews fans. As, uh, of course, COVID knocking everything out last year and uh, St. Andrews returning under their own banner this year after joining forces with next-door neighbors, crosstown rivals St. Stephen's as the Austin Saints three years ago. They played like that for two years. Last year, COVID pretty much knocking everything out. Uh, but this year, returning to action as their own standalone, uh, standalone football, practice, uh, football program and looking pretty sharp down there, Josh. And these guys, these young men, you know, they're kind of restoring history here at St. Andrews. they got to be excited about that. They definitely have to be. You know, you start being with a different team. Now you get to make your own identity, right. become your own team now. And this is a great start for them, definitely. We're going to have to see how they piece this together. So what we'll be seeing here this afternoon is the St. Andrews Varsity playing a uh, JV squad from Episcopal School out of Dallas making the trip down here. If you're confused, like ESD played last night. Yes, they did. But their JV squad is playing today against St. Andrews. So a good matchup for these two schools to get things started. Definitely, especially it's week one. And we'll turn it over to the PA for the opening ceremonies. Waiting for a few more minutes for things to really get going here. It's, you know, first home football game in a couple of years. I think they did manage to get an inter-squad scrimmage in last year in, in the midst of uh, COVID and that kind of thing. But it's been a while since they've uh, done a full football game. It's kind of like us on opening night. It takes a while to shake off the cobwebs. Yeah, it does. But, you know, it'll be a little bit of pre-game jitters, a little first-game jitters. But, you know, those go away as soon as you get out there. So the Highlanders, they will be the home team, obviously. Yeah, they Highlanders for the captain today, number seven, Daniel Day. Number 13, Stuart King. Number 62, Gus Stratton. And number 87, Rico Burwine. Captain's getting ready to meet out at midfield. We'll give them to you again in case it doesn't come through there. Number seven is uh, Daniel Lede. Lede or Lede? Lede. Lede. Thank you. Okay. Uh, 87 is Rico Burline. Number 62 is Gus Stratton, and number 13 is Stuart Kim. Those are all seniors. For Pistol School of Dallas. Across the way, 821 and 22. Strong. That is uh, Xander Nelson, Eddie 21, Olson, Eddie 21. Ellison, and number 22 and is Xander Stephen Nelson, Swan. Me in there midfield. We'll let you come in and see the coin toss here. First coin toss. And an old school grass field. I love that. We say, you know, I get the whole economics behind the turf, but I know these guys have to work hard to keep this field in shape. But it's so great to see a football game on grass. Oh, yeah. There's nothing like playing on grass. It's nope. so much different. You definitely don't get turf burn when you no, slide. No. But definitely, it just, it just feels so different. Happy to have you with us here on a Saturday afternoon for some matinee football. Get you warmed up for college football next week, I guess. Oh, most definitely. Can't <laughs> wait. Well, there is some college football today. All the real games start next week. Right, right. When, when TV's involved, they're going to sneak in a couple of games a week early if they can. Yep. We'll get an email going here in a little bit. Looks like Episcopal won the coin toss and chose to defer. The 
declined, and so St. Andrews will be receiving from the south. All right, so offense will get the ball first as football returns here to St. Andrews. And these guys are pumped up. Why wouldn't you be? It's the first game of the season. Yeah. First game is a, a new team entirely. Would you please rise and help us honor America with the national anthem? All right, we are ready for some football. Sorry about the little weird camera work there. We tried to get a shot of the American flag through our sort of jury-rigged window propping system here. Game time temperature, 93, deg uh, 93 degrees, partly sunny skies. I'm not sure if there's a diff difference between partly sunny and partly cloudy. I guess if you're in a good mood, it's partly sunny, and otherwise it's partly cloudy, right? Oh, definitely. But it looks like the clouds could take over eventually. And I, I'm sure the guys down in the field won't, won't mind that at all because it's it's warm, 93 degrees, a bit nice breeze blowing across, Most sort definitely. of a cross breeze coming from the visitor side over to the home side. The breeze feels good, especially yes, when you're wearing all black. Opening weekend here on Vibe Live and our new partnership of Flow Sports for some of our schools. I think we had 20 broadcasts last night, eight or so on Thursday night. Volleyball on Tuesday night. Got a couple of games here tonight on the Vibe Live Network. Pflugerville in action down in San Antonio. What else we have to play today? For the Highlanders, number three, Sean Goodlin, and number 21, Jack King. All right, team's on the field. We're about ready to go here. If you're listening instead of watching, Episcopal, the road team there, they're wearing the white jerseys, navy blue numerals and pants, and the navy blue helmet with a white stripe right down the middle. The Highlanders in the black jerseys and pants, white pinstripes down the side, the powder blue numerals on the back, and the white helmet with the Highlander logo on the side. Looks like Daniel Mathis with the ball on the tee here for the Eagles. Taking off for the Eagles, number eight. Dan nice Mathis. crowd on hand. Hope they brought their sunscreen, slitting these aluminum bleachers. They're, they're going to be adding a little touch of red to their uniforms tonight. Maybe just a little touch, not that much. <laughs> Folks here have waited for two years for football. Five years since they played a game under their own colors. And the ball's in the air. We are underway from St. Andrews. Fielded at the 15 yard line up to the 20 to the 25. To the outside of the 30, to the 35. Nice return, drives through the uh, attempt to tackle all the way out to the 39-yard line. Sean Goodlett on the return. And the Highlanders will start their 2021 season. First down and 10 at the 40-yard line. 
not a bad place to actually start. Now that we're finally get the kickoff going, it's a, uh, get the offense going a little right. bit. If you're a pass-happy team, I'd say throw it down the field. If you're a run-happy team, definitely get your running backs ready to start getting that contact right up the middle. First down and 10 for the Highlanders going right to left here from the 40-yard line. We'll get uh, some of the key names here as we go. One receiver wide right, two to the near side. High snap, play action, looking to his left, in trouble, and going to go down. Sacked in the backfield by Blake Hudson. Quarterback is Mark Greenberg, a junior for the Highlanders. Definitely not the way you would want to start it. I think the snap was a little bit too high for him. You got to know, maybe just throw it away, take a knee. But definitely miscommunication between the quarterback and the center there. This is definitely going to be a learning type season for these Highlanders. Nice to see the numbers. I'd estimate what about almost 40 guys. So that, that's that's a great start. It is. As they seek to rebuild the program. High snap. Swing it out here to the left side and incomplete. Had the receiver in the flat, but overthrown just a little bit. Trying to get it out to Aiden Key, a freshman. And that'll bring up a third down and 20 from the 30-yard line. Just sent away first quarter. Yeah. The pass was about really good. It was really good. It looked a little bit too high for him. But that's another thing that they have to work on as the game and as the season goes along, chemistry, especially with the fact that he's a freshman. Yeah, that's exactly. And that's, that's one thing you can't force. It yep. just takes time to get yep. that timing down. Yeah. Third down and 20 from the 30-yard line. Dropping back again. Hit as he throws the ball up in the air, and that ball is tipped up and intercepted. Dropped immediately by Anthony Tassone, but intercepted by Logan Lear. Not a disaster, not much different than a punt there in a long third down play. So first interception of the ball game gives the ball back to the Eagles with 11-10 to go in the opening quarter. Uh, that was a very, very good play defensively by there. He kept his eyes right there on the quarterback and made a great move on. I think one of the things that the quarterback has to remember is that his best guy was double covered. Right. Can't throw it in double coverage there. So the Eagles will take over for the first time in 2021. First down and 10 at their own 41-yard line, moving from left to right, ball in the near hash. In at quarterback, Johnny Willingham, he's a freshman. And off, left side and breaking tackles. Gets it out to about the 43 yard line, about a four yard pickup for Steven Swan. And that'll bring up a second down and six for Episcopal School of Dallas. It's going to be very nice to watch how their offense develops, especially right. so early in this game. Gain of three in the play, second down and seven. One receiver wide left, two to the near side, dropping back, looking, flying over to the right side, and incomplete. Pretty good coverage there by the Highlanders as they tried to swing it out to William Stahl. On the coverage, Stuart Kim and Nicholas Flemings. I think that the pass was just out of the reach of Stahl. I think very well he could have caught that came down with it. It was just a little bit. It was on his fingertips. You know, it's about the chemistry we were talking about right. a little bit earlier. I think in generally speaking, defenses are a little bit ahead of the offense in the first game of the season anyway. Definitely. Third down and seven from the 43-yard line. Willingham dropping back, looking, fires over the center of the field. That ball's picked off. <laughs> to the 45. Makes the first man miss and down there at the 41-yard line. Flag comes in after the play as a couple of guys get after it. Max Flint with the Max interception. With the and we'll check the extracurricular activity here. That was a great play defensively, just reading where the quarterback was going to be. He watched his eyes and he picked it off perfectly. We have all set Offsetting penalties, that means that the that interception. They'll just do it again. Interception did not happen. Oh, no. 
That's a tough break for the Highlanders as the defense has to come back on the field. But it's a fourth down, if nothing else. Nope, still third down. I'm sorry. But while the interception doesn't count, that does rile up your team a little bit. That gives that momentum swing to you. So now you can use that and definitely try to get a turnover or even uh, a turnover on downs if you necessarily need it. So third down to seven from the 42-yard line. Like it never happened. Clock stopped, 10 22 to go opening quarter. Now the officials discussing things. While well, there is time to be stopped. This is a great thing to try to get the perfect defense and the perfect offense right there out. I think they're trying to sort out whether it's third or fourth down. If it's offsetting penalties, they would replay the down. They, they would. I'm not understanding why they're saying it's fourth down. If it happened after the interception, then the interception should hold up. Uh, it would depend on when both penalties happen, but you're absolutely right. I thought we were going with third down or even maybe a possible fourth down. Opening weekend for the officiating crew as well. Yeah. <laughs> and now they're going to change again. Well, the teams are getting a lot of practice and coming in on and off the sidelines. Uh, there's not a lot of scrimmages you get these days. You get one, maybe two of them. <laughs> okay, so the interception does stand. Okay. It's going to be first down Highlanders. So Max Flint gets credit for the interception after all. Well, even though that took a little bit, the momentum has now swift, uh, has now officially shifted. <laughs> Highlanders now have it. Now let's see what they can do with it, especially now being in a positive territory. So back-to-back -back interceptions. First down and 10 Highlanders at the Eagle 41-yard line. 42-yard line, high snap. Hand off up the middle, first carry. Got a hole up to the left side. A fumble ball came out. And looks like St. Andrews managed to know it. Episcopal saying that they've got it. But the officials say otherwise. Good carry there by Daniel Lede. Picks up four yards, second down and six. Yeah. One of the things you have to remember as a running back, you have to protect the ball. It's one of the most important things when you're running with the ball. You have to protect yeah. it, keep it near your body. Everybody is trying to swipe the ball, not necessarily tackle you, but they're definitely trying to keep you up so they can knock the ball out. That's become such an art, such a science. Second down and six from the 38-yard line. And uh, oh, play action. And they're going to blow it dead. <laughs> Haven't seen an indication yet, but there it is. Procedure of the call on the Highlanders. That'll push it back five yards, bring up a second down and 11. Uh. I think we can just throw that out and say it's just first game jitters. That's what causes oh yeah. most. That's at least what causes most penalties in the first couple of weeks. It's yep. jitters. It's your first time out there. The new offense or defense. That's what can cause it. The so second and eleven back at the forty-three yard line. Greenberg dropping back, dumps it off underneath, complete to Lede out of the backfield, makes the first man miss, makes the second man miss. Lowers the shoulder, gets it inside the 35, all the way down to the 31-yard line. Just a dump ball pass, and Lede did all the work breaking tackles, picked up about 12 yards, and a Highlander first down. Lede did all the work on that, and it was just supposed to be like a little bootleg outside, but he had the refusal. He did not want to go down. He broke tackles, stiff-armed, and got that first down. That's what you like to see in a guy like that, fight. So first down, St. Andrews at the 32-yard line of the Eagles. 9.19 to go, no score first quarter. One receiver wide right, one to the near side. Greenberg, play action, bat ball batted up in the air and knocked down. Swatted away there by T.J. Gassell. Gassell. Pass batted down, second down and 10. Boy. Yeah, now that we're kind of settled in here, I'll get an email going. If you want to give a shout out to your favorite player on either side, we'll give that address out here the next break of the action. Second down and 10 for the Highlanders. 
Shuttle pass underneath. Trying to turn the corner to the 35. Has the edge to the 30. And scampers out of bounds to the 27-yard line. Pretty good speed there by Anthony Tassone, a junior. Uh, that's a great play right there, especially when you just had the batted ball. When you have a play like a batted ball, incomplete pass, or something that kind of doesn't make you lose yards but right. changes the momentum, you need something really, not necessarily big, but you need something that will push you forward. And that's definitely what they need, especially coming up with this third down. All right, just wanted to make sure I could see the corner of the field here. There we go. For us, third down and about four from the 25-yard line. Handoff up the middle. And very near the first down yardage, down to about the 22-yard line. That was Sean Goodlett on the carry. In four down territory here. Fourth and a long yard. Big play early for the offense for the Highlanders. Fourth down and less than a yard to go. Well, this is where you decide what to do, and it looks like they're just going to stay on the field and yep. go for it. I would say if you have faith in a kicker, go for it. But this is a very gutsy call, especially early in the game like this. Be a 40-yard field goal attempt from here, so fourth down and about a yard and a half. And off up the middle. The hog mollies up front. Clear the hole. Oh, the ball comes out and picked up. What a lucky break there for the Highlanders. We'll see who saved the play there for St. Andrews. Looks like 53, one of the big guys up front. Jacob Kruger. It was Daniel Lede carrying it. He took a shot. You may have seen the mouthpiece come flying out Ugh. along with the football, but right there to scoop it up. Johnny on the spot. Jacob Kruger, first down Highlanders. And what a lucky break for the Highlanders. You get the first down and you almost lose it on the same exact play. Heads up play by the offensive lineman to get that there. Inside the red zone for the first time. First down and 10 at the 19 yard line. Oh. And that may have been a busted play there. Looking for somebody to get rid of the football to, and there was nobody there. And Greenberg goes down. He looked like he wanted to get it to Anthony Tassone, but they never connected. That'll be a big loss back to the 28-yard line. It looked like it was a little bit of a miscommunication, maybe, mm -hmm. from the offensive lineman on who to block, and that's how he got to the backfield so fast. Definitely have to make sure the offensive lineman is on. Uh, they're, they're all on the same page. Second down and about 18 yards to go. Oh, not on the uh, same snap count there. That'll push him back another five yards. So uh, drive starting to go the wrong direction here. While they sort that out, the email is voiceofthevipers at gmail.com. All one word, voiceofthevipers at gmail.com. I'm... Normally the broadcaster for Vandergrift High School here in Austin, so hold your nose and send an email to voiceofthevipers at gmail.com. Let us know your favorite player on either side. If you're an Episcopal fan, that's fine too. Boy, great minds think alike, Josh Blumenthal. I snap, looking downfield, firing over to the side, complete at the 32-yard line, breaking tackles inside the 30. To Luke Precourt. As we hear from Josh Blumenthal, I was about to text him and tell him I was uh, at his own stopping grounds, the former associate athletic director here at St. Andrews, taking on an AD role up in Wisconsin, where I hope it's a lot cooler up there than it is down here. I was going to text him and say hello, but he beat me to it. Says, regards from the Midwest, go Highlanders. Thank you, Josh. Hope you're doing well. Third down and 20 from the 30-yard line. Dropping back, looking downfield, firing over to the left side, and caught! <laughs> caught inside the 15, down to the 13-yard line. Nice hands in traffic by Anthony Tassone. I can tell that they have a lot of trust in Tassone. He was double covered, and he still made the catch. Good hands. That's something that you definitely want from him. And you're right, that was pretty good coverage. It really he was. He made a nice catch, and... A nice pass from uh, Greenberg to thread the needle there. Yeah. Fourth down and three. Got a bunch of it. Still fourth down coming up here. Fourth down and a long three from about the 14-yard line. Ooh, could have snapped it and had the first down. They got him in the neutral zone. but And now we're going to get a timeout. So timeout on the field. Timeout Highlanders. It's been a good drive. It is a good drive. They did have those couple of plays when they were going backwards, 
But other than that, they have been really moving the ball down the field fairly well. Still kind of tweaking our setup here. We'll lift that up, slide that under there. There we go. That should work a little better. Thanks to Mr. Jeff McCrary, athletic director here at St. Andrews, for getting us all set up. Oh, and as I say that, we get an email giving a shout out to Mr. McCrary. We'll get to that after this play here. Fourth down and about four. Low snap, dribbles along the ground. He's going to pick it up and just uh, be swallowed up right there. That disrupted the timing. And coming in with the easiest sack of his high school career has been Rashon. Nice drive will come up empty. Turnover on downs with, I think, 6.09 to go in the first quarter and a still scoreless ball game. Uh. As Catherine Bowie writes in, says, shout out to our AD, Jeff McCrary, for everything he has done so far the school year, including getting, out of the football, getting our football program back and helping during the preseason with all of our sports. Oh, and go Highlanders field hockey. Catherine Bowie. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, even the Highlanders, you definitely hate the fact that you got so far down the field and you didn't come up with anything. Right. But this could be another chance for them. Maybe you get something, try to switch the momentum again. They did flip the field position. That pass completed here to the near side up to about the 28-yard line. Completed out to Hutch Chipman, wrapped up by Aiden Carey on the stop. Short gain there on the little button hook. They still call it a button hook these days? Well, they call it a lot of different things, but I still go with the button hook. <laughs> Second down and call it six. Hand off left side. And tripped up in the backfield. Falls forward to about the 30-yard line to Swan. Didn't see who came in backside, but got enough of the shoestring to knock him down. Bring up a third down and about six. I notice that Episcopal is both running and throwing the ball. I think they have such a balanced offense for what they've shown us that they can move the ball down the field. They just have to find the right combo just to move it down a little more. High snap over the quarterback's head. He'll have to go scramble on it. And this has been a game of anything you can do, I can try to do as well. We've seen back-to-back -back <laughs> interceptions, now back-to-back -back bad snaps at critical times. And that's a fourth, uh, force a fourth and long in a punting situation here for the Eagles. Yeah, that's one of those plays that you definitely see on the, the football follies late at night. Yeah, right. But good job by, I think it's Eland. Good job by Eland to just get down on it, not try to pick it up and do something with it. As a diehard Chicago Bears fan, I've seen way too many plays like that over the past couple of years. Yep. <laughs> Xander Nelson set to punt it away. He's standing about a yard deep in his end zone. And a flag comes down before the snap could get off. Maybe be delay a game possibly? I'm not sure. It, it is against uh, the Eagles, so that'll push him back another five yards. Substitution maybe? Okay. okay. He's deep in his own end zone. Snap dribbles back to the punter, does a good job fielding it and gets a pretty decent punt. And that ball is muffed at the 31-yard line. Who fell on it? Highlanders say they got it back, and it looks like they did. So they catch a bit of a break there. It's just been a lot of, a lot of fumbles, a lot of interceptions, a lot of defense, and a lot of offensive mistakes thus far in the beginning. St. Andrews takes over first down and 10. The good news is for them, they're, they've been knocking on the door most of this first quarter with 4.09 to go. They have been. They've been in very good field position, even starting from the first kickoff. They started at their own 40. So first down and 10 for the Highlanders at the 33-yard line.
Greenberg in the shotgun. Lede to his left. Lede with the carry right up the middle. Puts his head down and bulls the pile forward inside the 30 down to the 29-yard line. Picking up about three yards and bring up a third down, a second down and seven. Clock rolling, 3.39 to go. It's a good experience for this young uh, Eagles team, too. A JV team, they get to play four 12-minute quarters in the heat. I know. It's going to be a little bit different for them, especially mentally, not having to play as much. Pass over to the far side. That ball is batted away. Good coverage downfield. Try to get it down to Aiden Key. James Jones with step-to-step step, uh, step step coverage, and Jones is down after the play. Did very well with covering the ball, but now he's down on the field. Hopefully he's okay. Hopefully he's okay. Just landed on the football wrong or something like that is what you hope. Yeah. Best description I ever heard about getting the wind knocked out of you was you feel like you're going to die and you wish you would. <laughs> <laughs> uh, definitely. I've had the wind knocked out of me a few times. I can, uh, I can attest to that. That's exactly how it feels. Hopefully that's all it is here for this young man. Uh. Training staff still tending to him. Email is open, voice of the vipers at gmail.com. Looks like they're going to get him to his feet. That's good to see, and he's walking off the field under his own power. A little gingerly, but good to see him up and moving and walking off the field. So hopefully it's nothing serious, and he can get back out here this afternoon. If you're the Eagles, I think what you need is something – your defense, especially your secondary, has been very good at breaking up passes and almost coming up with interceptions. I think that if they can just get better pressure from their front seven, they'll be fine. Swing out here to the left side of the day. He's got a head of steam, and a flag comes down inside the 30, uh, 25 down to the 24, but I think we might have a hold here on the edge. So this one will be coming back. Holding is the call. Give a shout out and a thank you to the coach, Les Clary, back at the Comfy Cozy Vibe Live Studios. Keeping an eye and an ear on the broadcast, making sure that we're looking and sounding well. That ball is going to be moved back after the penalty to the 32-yard line. Where it will be third down and about nine yards to go. See if they can pick this up. Lede to the left side. Greenberg in the shotgun. Two receivers wide right, one to the near side. Dropping back. Good protection this time. Fires over to the right side. Got a receiver behind the defense. Incomplete. Just a little high. They'll get that worked out as they try to get it out to uh, Tassone. Uh, that pass was a little bit too high, but I, I like what they called there. That was yeah. a very smart play. Just, just a little bit too much on that one. And credit to the big guys up front to give him some time to throw the football. Yeah, it seems like they're starting to now get right on the page, giving him more and more time. It also doesn't look like they're choosing to punt this time around either. Unless they line up at a pooch punt here. Nicholas Fasone on the left side, number 51. Jacob Kruger, left guard, number 53. Dropping back, looking. Firing with him. They got him wide open. Oh, oh. out of the hands. Right through That's what they hands. wanted. Luke Precourt just couldn't quite haul it in. That ball has some zip on it. Falls Good. incomplete and another turnover on downs with 2.46 to go opening quarter. And now for the Eagles, look at where you're going to be starting. 
It's probably the best field position you've had all day. And now you can probably use that momentum of, on the turnover and get a score. Nice crowd on hand here at St. Andrews. One receiver wide left, two to the near side. And a high snap over the head. And having a fall on it to save the possession was Steven Swan. That'll be a big loss back at the at about the 19-yard line. Like I said last night, it's not normal yet, but it's normaler. Yeah. Fans in the stands and it is. I think if you're the Eagles, this is a very odd position because the last two offensive plays it's been a high snap i wonder yeah. what's going on yeah there's behind the chains and then there's way behind the chains <laughs> yep. second down and a bunch and off left side trying to turn the corner and gets it turned to a certain extent out to the 28 yard line got a chunk of it back swan on the carry that's going to bring up a third down and about uh, 12 or 14 yards looks like No, we're coming towards the end of the first, but I think what you have to do if you're Episcopal. Oh, there's a flag in the play. I wonder why the official was saying to stop the clock. Yeah. And it is against the Eagles. So where are they going to spot this thing? All the way back to the 15-yard line. They've got to get it out to the 42. So by my UT math, it's about 27, second and 27 to go. Yep. I think this is where you draw up your long play. There's not a lot of plays designed to get this kind of <laughs> yardage, but let's see what you have. Wow. And another, well, they just adjust the ball, it looks like. Oh. So it's even second and longer now. Hand off right side. And wrapped up high around the 15 yard line. And a flag comes flying in. They might have gotten a face mask there. Face mask or a horse collar? Uh, it looked more like a face mask than a horse collar. If that's the case, that's going to be a. Well, never mind. It's holding on the Episcopal. <laughs> Well, a rough drive gets a little bit worse here for the Eagles. Yeah, they started going backwards with that snap, and they have right. not gone forward since. So it's a spot foul. They'll mark it from the 20, put it all the way down to the 10, 11-yard line. So it's 31, second and 31. If there's not many plays for second and 20, there's even less for second and 31. Yeah, absolutely. The only idea that I would have, maybe a screen. Maybe a screen can right. work in this position. So second down and 31 yards to go from the 10-yard line. Dropping back. Fires over to the right side. They're going for it all. That ball is incomplete. Try to get it down the field to Hutch Chipman. Good coverage downfield by Chet King. I thought to bring up a third down. He had him. It was right yeah. in stride. One-on-one. Yeah. -on -one. That's exactly what you want when you're a quarterback, especially looking for the most open receiver. That's exactly what you want. Just a little bit too much mustard on that one. 119 to go opening quarter. It's, this quarter's going on for a while with all the penalties and that kind of thing. It's taking a while. Penalties and turnovers and 
And off left side, picks his way, gets by the first wave and can't get by the second wave. Wrapped up there at about the 17 yard line. Looked like that was gonna go for a lot more, but it looked like Jamie De La Garza Montfort, I think was the young man that got a hold of him. Now that'll bring up a fourth down and a bunch. Looks like Episcopal is in an actual punting situation. Hopefully they don't go backwards to where their punter is. Well, the dangerous part for them. Line. We've seen a couple snap sales, so. Yep. High, but not terrible. And a nice job by the punter to get it out of there. Oh. Angles it here, fielded at the 42 yard line, and a fair catch called for. Oh, and there's no. a flag. Mental mistake there by the Eagles as uh, Stuart Kim called for the fair catch and the Episcopal player making contact, which is a no no. So instead of having it at the 41 yard line, uh, St. Andrews should have it at the 26. Uh, this only makes it harder now for Episcopal defensively because, n well, while, while the Highlanders have not really moved the ball and scored yet, they're now knocking on the door. It's going right. to be a lot easier for them. Thank you. They're keeping the pressure on. I mean, this whole entire first quarter has been played on the Episcopal side of the field. It has been. So first down and 10 at the 26-yard line. You would think eventually they're going to hit pay dirt here. Yeah. They got to just keep chipping away. Chipping away at that yardage. They're looking just for a breakdown in the coverage maybe. Quarterback change as Jake Campbell takes over. Freshman quarterback getting some snaps here under in the shotgun. He's got Sean Goodlett lined up to his right side. And a timeout taken on the field with 28 seconds to go. Well, Joshua was used to seeing black and blue teams. He was out of Maynard New Tech last night. Yes, it was. It was a very interesting game. Besides the fact that there was a lot of special teams play, a lot of swim kicks, a lot of onside kicks, but definitely it was a very great experience just to be out there and watch. Relatively new program out there at New Tech as they split off from Maynard High School a couple of years ago. Yep. One of the coolest names in sports, the Titans. Titans, love that name. I like Highlanders, too. Oh, yeah. You don't really hear about a lot of Highlanders mm. out there, so that's a very unique name out there. Changed a few years ago from the Crusaders. I still catch myself every now and then slipping up and saying that. Crusader and Highlanders, those are very, those aren't typical names, but no. I like those. I was out at Monroe Stadium as Vandergrift dominated Cedar Park last night, 42-7. The Vipers breaking out some new uniforms. Yep. All black with chrome silver helmets. I oh mean wow. chrome. Serious chrome. That. Well, like I can't 57 wait to see some Chevy of that. bumper chrome. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to see some of that. First down and 10. Play action pass. Looking, firing over the middle. That ball is in traffic and it falls incomplete. Trying to get it down the field to Aiden Key. <laughs> Bit of a dangerous pass there, but Campbell trying to thread the needle. Stops the clock with 28 seconds to go. I don't know what it is, but both quarterbacks for the Highlanders seem to be, they seem to be always in the vicinity of Logan Lear. Number five for the Eagles. He has just been everywhere. Rolling to his right and going to be knocked down at the 30-yard line is Sean Goodlett as Josh Blumenthal sending us some tidbits. Mr. Former Sports Information Director, he can't <laughs> get it out of his head. We'll uh. kind of dribble them out here. We mentioned it. St. Andrews has played uh, under three mascots in the last five years. We were talking about the Crusaders. We talked about the Saints, the joint squad with St. Stephen's in the pregame show, and of course now the Highlanders. So Kind of dries up the uniform budget a little bit, maybe. But it really does, especially well if you're switching the team color every time. <laughs> right. It says here, I want to get the title right. Yeah, head coach Rick Reitz always coaches in boat shoes. That's got to be a story. Oh, I wonder why. You hear about coaches doing 
weird things such as Les Miles used to eat grass <laughs> when he was coaching for <laughs> LSU. But I wonder what the story behind the boat shoes is. Yeah, how did, how did that come about? He's right. I see it. I see it down there in the field. <laughs> Dropping back, looking, firing over the right side. That ball is incomplete again. And a flag comes in after the play. Oh, no. Trying to get it down the field to the big tight end, Rico Burline. And we'll see if he might have a hold or something like that here on the Eagles. Eagles coaching staff saying it was uncatchable. They'll always lobby that. It could be belt high and they'd say it was uncatchable. <laughs> See if it's pass interference or defensive holding. Uh, defensive holding. So that'll be a five rod penalty. If I remember right, it's going to be a first down, and that takes us to the end of the first quarter. So one quarter in the books. Still scoreless here from Beck Stadium on the campus of St. Andrews. And pretty, you know, a, a, a tough defensive struggle. A lot of, uh, you know, you got a young team on the far side of the field, a rebuilding team on the near side of the field playing the first game in a couple of years are the Highlanders. You would expect those kind of miscues. You definitely expect a lot of those miscues. But one of the things that I've noticed a lot is, especially with the Highlanders, they are taking a lot of shots down the field, and they're really challenging the Eagles to, to come after them. And I like that. They have the momentum on their side. They have the confidence to keep doing what they're doing. They should... We should see more of that, especially coming into the second quarter. Some more information here from Josh. Just kind of scrolling through here. 16 former SAS alumni have gone on to play in the NCAA since 2002. The first year in which college athletes came out of the upper school here at St. Andrews. Cole Baker from 2016, the first and only forward football, tough football player of the week recipient who went on to MIT. He sent over a list of present players in the NCAA. And it looks like we're going to have one more play here in the first quarter. As a penalty. The uh, quarter can't end on a defensive penalty, so... First down and 10 here for the Highlanders. And off up the middle, goes for no gain, and that will be the end of the first quarter. So now the teams will switch sides of the field. We'll get ready for start uh, quarter number two. Present players from St. Andrews in the NCAA, courtesy of Mr. Josh Blumenthal. Michael Thomas, class of 2019 at Rhodes. Patrick Wilson, class of 2020 at Claremont McKenna. William Goodman, class of 2020 at University of Chicago, my old neck of the woods. The best ever season for the Crusaders was Ty Detmer's last campaign here. The Crusaders going 8-1 in 2015. Mm. Josh now up at Wayland Academy. Up in Wisconsin. So thanks uh, very much, Mr. Josh Mumethal, for all the extra information. Nice. All right, so the team switched sides of the field. I'll get the crick out of my neck and move the camera over to the right side of the field. We haven't been over here since the opening kickoff. We have not been. Thanks again to the coach, Les Cleary, keeping an eye and an ear on the broadcast for us. I agree, coach. So the rest of being a little flag happy for the first game of the season. Yeah. I see both sides of that argument. These are younger players. You want them to learn, and, you know, the only way they're going to learn is the flag for stuff, but it does make it a little frustrating, disrupting the flow of the game. Yeah, it really does. And off up the middle. 
Nope, that's faked me out. Swung it over to the left side, complete to the 20, to the 15, and down to the 13-yard line. Nice play fake from Mark, uh, Mark Greenberg, who's back in the game. Faked the hand off to Lede and dumped it off to Rico Burline. Good for about seven yards. This is the best field position they've had all day. Let's see what they can do with it and capitalize. They're really liking to use Lede in a lot of different ways, kind of using him like an offensive weapon, using him in the backfield and the slot. I like that. Big third down coming up here. You got to think that coach is going to take two plays here to pick up these three yards. I think that you got to take your best two plays and use them to get this first down. Third down and a long three from just inside the 14-yard line. One receiver wide left, two to the near side. Handoff up the middle. He's going to get it done inside the 10, down to about the 8-yard line. That'll be a first and goal for the Highlanders. <laughs> the end of the day, the big man with the carry. I guess that is their best play. And it's been the one that's been the most successful thus far. They really trust Lede with running the ball. Yeah, grass field, old school smash mouth football, right up the gut. About the simplest play there is. One receiver wide left, two to the near side. Give it to Lede again. He makes the first guy miss. Rugby piles it forward, still digging for more. Inside the five. Bull rushes his way down to about the two-yard line. Lede and the offensive lineman getting it done. I love that. You love watching those big, big scrambles and those piles when those strong running backs. But nine times out of ten, the best part of that is when the running back comes out from the other side. Oh, there was a fumble, however. Looks like he fumbled at the end of the play. I didn't even see it come out, but it looks like Episcopal is going to take over first down at their own two-yard line. Oh. That's odd to me because even in the scrum with all the bodies, I could, didn't even see the ball, let alone it coming out. I did, yeah, I didn't either. Well, the defense has got him pinned down. Just get a three and out and get it back here. Or force a f uh, turnover of your, of your own. That's been the pattern here today. The best case scenario for the Highlanders would very much be an interception for a touchdown right here. And now the teams are switching sides again. I'm well, like we said, I'm so confused. <laughs> like we said, the even the officials are having first game jitters. Well, so it will be. Second and goal from about the two-yard line. We've done a lot of work over the years with the Austin football officials, and I tell you what, it's easy to pick on them, but knowing what they go through and how hard they work, it kind of yep. takes the fun out of picking on them. It does. Not that I won't do it every now and then, but, yeah. you know. It's fun. But they do work very, very hard just to make sure that everything is afloat. Second and goal from the two. Highlanders still have possession. I snap, rolling right, looking, firing towards the goal line, caught, touchdown! <laughs> the flag comes in after the play. And I apologize you couldn't see the actual reception there in the end zone. We've got uh, something to hold the window open so it doesn't slide down in front of our camera. <laughs> On sports, I'm not going to be the call here. But the touchdown was good. Anthony Tasson hauling that one in for the first touchdown for the Highlanders in return to football. And of course it has to happen in one portion of the field that you can't see on the camera. <laughs> so the 15 wow. yard on sports and the like will make this extra point attempt a 30 yard try. Oh. 
And a timeout on the extra point attempt. So six to nothing to score with 11.21 to go. been a strange game it has been a strange game and we're only still in the second quarter we're in the beginning of the second quarter so my question is how much stranger can this game really <laughs> get Six nothing to score. Looks like they're going to try for two here with the uh, penalty making a pretty long extra point attempt. So the two point conversion attempt here from the 18 for the Highlanders. Two receivers wide left, one of the near side. Black comes down, free play perhaps towards the goal line. That ball is incomplete. Oh Just off the fingertips of Aiden Key, but I think somebody's lay up offsides on the defense. Somebody lined up in the neutral zone. So the Highlanders take a shot, doesn't work out. They move it five yards closer and try again. He had it in a great position. He had yeah. it right on the fingertips, just couldn't haul it in. But very, very smart play to go for it. So they'll try it again this time from the 13-yard line. Looks like they're going to try for two again. Yep. So, again, two receivers wide left, one to the near side. Jay Campbell, the quarterback, looking, firing towards the left side. That ball is caught. The two-point <laughs> conversion is good. Well, we didn't get to see his touchdown catch, but we did see the two-point conversion as Anthony Tassone hauls it in to make your score now 8 to nothing with 11-10 to go in the first quarter. And finally, Joshua... <laughs> After living on their side of the field for the whole first quarter, <laughs> St. Andrews finally pushes it in. That's finally good. It's always good to get a touchdown, but especially when you've been having a little bit of a drought for a while, it's really, really good. Great job and great play calling by the coaches down there. And great execution just from the offense. Let's see if they can keep that momentum going and get a quick stop on defense. So 8 nothing Highlanders. St. Andrews drawing first blood of the 2021 season. Do want to remind you at Academy Sports and Outdoors, back to school also means back to sport. And from graphic tees to football cleats, we have everything you need to make this your best year yet. Swing by your local Academy store today or shop online at academy.com. And you can find all the hottest styles from top brands like Nike, Adidas, Under Armour, and Vans. All at a price you'll love. So if you want game-changing gear, start here at Academy Sports and Outdoors. Academy back for a second year is our network sponsor here at the Vibe. Thanks to those folks. Eight nothing, St. Andrews on top. Short, high, pooch kick here to the near side, and that one is going to land out of bounds. And they'll either make them re-kick it or Episcopal has the opportunity to take it at the 35-yard line. It's kind of more of what you would prefer to do at this point. I think because you've been having such a off game offensively, I would take the 35 and try to just storm down the field. Yeah, 
Yeah, looks like that's exactly what they're going to do. They're going to keep it at the 35-yard line. Nope, they're going to make them re-kick it. Oh, okay. So we'll push it back five yards and kick it again. So here's an obscure rule. If they push it back five years, five yards, they kick it out of bounds again. Do they still get to take it at the 35 or do they get to take it at the 40? Oh, that's a very good. I'm sure that's in the rule book somewhere. I have no idea. I, I couldn't tell you. Well, let's see what happens. Not going to happen here. Good kickoff this uh, time. Fielded at the 18-yard line. A oh. fumble out of bounds. Oh, very unfortunate. So that did not work out well for Episcopal <laughs> School. No. He had it in his hands, and that is a live ball once it touches the ground, but you have to. You have to do what you can. He just muffed it. So instead of having it at the 35-yard line, they'll have it after 18. So that worked out to be a 17-yard uh, switch for St. Andrews instead of getting <laughs> on what was supposed to be a penalty for them. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, Coach Les is saying still would be the 35. Well, that's no fun. <laughs> First down and 10 for the Eagles. Their offense hasn't been on the field much here at the 19-yard line. Play action. Dumped it off right side. Wide open, but he fell. He had a lot of green grass in front of him. He did. He just slipped. Ethan Pham, he had, uh, he had some room, but he got tangled up in his feet. Yeah. I know as a player, as a former player myself, I know that's one of the things that you just hate. You have the ball. You have nothing but green grass in front of you. Maybe right. a, a dodge or two, and you just slip, and they catch you. So complete complete for no gain. Second down and 10. Ball still spotted at the 19. Dropping back, looking fine over the right side, and that one's incomplete. Let him a little bit too much. Good coverage by Victor Alcorta. As I try to get it out to Fam again, that'll bring up a third down and 10 and a chance for the defense to get off the field. They haven't really done much offensively. In the beginning, they were running the ball fairly well and throwing the ball every once in a while. Now it seems, at least in this standpoint, that they've abandoned the running game entirely. Third down and 10. Hand off left side, bounce it to the outside. If he can get the corner turn, he might get the first down. Can't quite get there. Edge out of bounds at about the 29. Now that's going to be very close. Going to depend on the spot. Steven Swan, pretty good speed. I think they're going to give it to him. They are. So Swan picks up the first down with the running play on the third down and 10. That's their secret weapon. They have to start going to the well a little bit more right. and giving it to, to Swan. If not, then they have to, whoever their best guy is, they have to wake him up. But I think it's been Swan thus far. Dropping back, looking, firing right side, in and out of the hands of the intended receiver. This time trying to get it to J.P. Jones, and again, Victor Alcorta there on the coverage, draped all over him. Ball's incomplete, second down and 10. I know that you're down by one possession, but you still have to, you still got to push for it. You still got to come with your best plays. And off right side, a collision in the backfield. Managed to get by it and gets uh, some positive yards out to the 30, and it actually turned into a pretty good play. Good effort there by Swan. There is a flag in the backfield, however, that probably a hold. It was a really good run by Swan, especially in the beginning when he got knocked back yeah. by his own offensive lineman. You don't typically see that a lot, but that was good. Unfortunately, they're going to have to move back. 
because of the hold. I didn't see who came in from the left side applying pressure, but really disrupted that play and forced the hold. So instead of a nine yard pickup for the Eagles, it'll be a 10 yard holding penalty. And make a second and 20 from back inside the 19 yard line. No, when you're playing offensive linemen, one of the things about it is that you tend to hold more when you feel a little bit rushed by the person who's rushing you. You seem, when you're a mismatch or you want to try to gain an advantage to help yourself out. Right. But all that really does is kind of, it kind of shoots you in the foot in the long run. Hand off up the middle and up it right there in the backfield. What a play. <laughs> Crashing in. I think that's 87. We'll double check. But yeah, that is uh, Rico Berline, the tight end. He made his presence felt. Burline knew where to go. Looks like he has the nose for the ball. He knew exactly what they were running. And he blew that play up immediately. Back at the 15-yard line, loss of four. So it's third and 24. Dropping back, looking, firing left side, and little contact, looking for a flag, no? May have been within five yards, so it falls incomplete. And the punting unit will come out here for the Eagles. Uh, I think this were, they showed a few little flashes of what they can do on that last drive. I think they just have to, they're having an issue putting it all together. But now if you're the Highlanders, this is perfect because not only are they in their own territory, you're going to get the ball back and with some really good field right. position and a chance to score again, make this game a two-possession game. Good snap back this time. End over end punt. Fair catch called for, and it let that one get by him and rolled another 10 yards downfield. So a pretty good punt there by the Eagles. Good field position, however, for the Highlanders. They'll take over first down 10 at the 43-yard line, but... Episcopal flipping the field about as best as they could hope for there. Yeah, that was really good. That was a really good punt. Don't typically say that on a punting play, but that was a great punt by the <laughs> punter that switched everything around. Try to fix a little schmutz on my camera here that I just noticed. I thought it was a glare, but I realized it was moving with me. So you're going to see, see, see something weird here for a minute. There we go. I have no idea what that was, but got it off the lens. Look, I think it was a bug because it fell <laughs> fell off the <laughs> front of the camera. Dumped it over left side, incomplete. Tried to swing it out to Coleman Elkin, Elkins, but the ball is incomplete. Second down and ten. Stops the clock with eight and a half to go here in the second quarter. And off. Nope, we got a reverse. Trying to turn the corner. I got a stop. There's a face mask. Yeah, you can yep. see uh, Anthony Tasson just trying to shake off the defender who got a, a hand up in the grill. <laughs> Definitely can't have that. It's a danger to the player if you're pulling on the face mask, but it's that's why it's a penalty. Good play by the defense to get penetration and read that play, but they got the hand up in the face mask, and it'll be a 15-yard penalty and a first down for the Highlanders. Absolutely. I think they expected a, a reverse or some yeah. sort of trick play. That's why they were able to get there so well. So that pushes the ball over to the eagle side of the field at the 45-yard line. Yep. First down and 10, St. Andrews. Hand off, up the middle. And digging forward for a couple of yards there, Lede. You can see him wrapping up that football. He's put it on the on the turf a couple of times, so doing a good job protecting the football that time. Yeah. Well, 
They're starting to really move down the field very well. The Highlanders are. I think that they just need one more little mismatch. Whatever they're doing, it seems to be working because Episcopal does not have any answers. Matt coming in motion left to right, then give it to Lede up the middle again. Puts his head down and pounds it inside the 40 yard line. They're going to give him the 39. A hard earned four yards there for the senior. Roman Jovanovic getting up from the bottom of the pile for the Eagles. So third and four here for St. Andrews from the 39-yard line of Episcopal. I think it is about at this point that you would ask yourself, do you trust your kicker to try to make a field goal this long? Off and back swing over here to the near side, complete inside the 40 to the 35 to the 30. They won't have to worry about it yet, down to the 27-yard line. Little slot screen there to Aiden Key, who came back, helped out his quarterback, made a nice catch and a nice move inside. First down, St. Andrews. That was a good inside slant. That was a good route by the receiver, especially when he had the ball. He had the good sense and the power to just change direction like that. Right. Clock rolling, 6.28 to go first half. St. Andrews up 8-0. On the move again. One receiver wide left, two to the near side. Hand off the day off left tackle. Splits through the defense and dives forward to about the 26-yard line for a couple yards. Greenberg trying to get him up and run a little up-tempo here for the Highlanders. They are, and that's the perfect thing to do, keep your defense off balance. Greenberg rolling right. Steps up, fires right side. That ball is intercepted. Nice play by Logan Lear. <laughs> Tried to find a key on the, sort of the fade route. You know, they have been really picking on Logan Lear all day. He got the first interception, and he almost had one at the end of the first quarter. But he gets his second one of the day, and he has been absolutely amazing. They have to start watching out for him, maybe taking a little few, you know, little – few extra seconds just to yeah. try to figure out where he is on the field. Throw it to the other side of the field, maybe. So the bad news is the Eagles have the football. The good news is they're still uh, pinned down well inside their own territory at the 14-yard line. With 5.44 to go. One receiver wide right, two to the near side. Rolling to his right, dumps it off underneath, complete out to the 20 to the 25 to the 29 yard line. That's the same play that ran last series where uh, the receiver, Ethan Pham, fell down. This time he doesn't fall down. Exactly. And picks up about 11 yards on the play. Well, they can't use that play every single time to try to get down the field, but it's a great start to this drive. You can just get a couple of first downs. You can get into a rhythm, yep. move down the field, make this a game again. Nice pass from Xander Nelson out to the 25-yard line. First down for Episcopal School of Dallas. Dropping back. Underneath and picked off. To the 20. To the 15. Inside the 15. Down to the 13-yard line. Beautiful job jumping the route. Max Flint, that's his second one of the day, if I remember right. Yeah, it's his second one today, and you know what? That's why it's one of the worst things you can do as a quarterback. He had a lot of traffic around that receiver. I don't know what he was thinking. I think he was either trying to just throw it away or try to squeeze it into a place he couldn't. And that's how you get the interception. Yeah, that ball definitely thrown in traffic. Flint right there to gladly take it off his hands. And the Highlanders are knocking on the door again with 5.23 to go in the first half. This is kind of where the Highlanders have been. They've kind of made a home inside Episcopal's uh, territory. We'll see if St. Andrews can take advantage. First down and 10 at the 14-yard line. 
Lede. Ball's on the, on the ground again at the 10-yard line. It looks like the Eagles have it back. Well, they just keep giving it back, don't they? Interception. One interception turns to two interceptions, turns yeah. to a fumble. Doesn't seem that either team really wants to keep the ball. Seems like they want to just give it away. Well, coaches love to have stuff to work on, so they'll be working on that this week for sure. Most definitely. Definitely the security and the protection of the ball. So Episcopal will have it at the 11-yard line after the back-to-back -back turnovers. Hand off up the middle. And going absolutely nowhere. Beautiful job. Open field tackle. Uh, that is always one of the things I've liked and I always admire so much about defensive players. Defensive players that can come in and make an open field tackle. Because it's really easy when he's stopped or in a scrum. But when it's in the open field, just you and him, it's a, really, it's a lost art in this league. Or just in football in general. And I like that. Andrew Farmer, the junior, with that nice play. Second down and 10 from the 11-yard line. Want to receive a wide right to the near side. Dropping back now, rolling right, firing over the right side, and uh -huh. incomplete. And you notice that time, Joshua, that play has worked a couple of times for Episcopal. That time there were two black jerseys out there waiting for number 20 in case he managed to haul it in. Yeah, he would have been decimated as soon as he caught it, but also he threw it a little bit too low. Yep. Would have had to just drop down to catch it, so. A nice adjustment by the Highlander coaching staff to sniff that one out. Third and 10 from the 11-yard line. Two receivers wide right, one to the near side. Nelson in the shotgun. Dropping back, looking, firing right side, complete. And wrapped up after about a two-yard gain. Beautiful job there in the open field. I think that was Stuart Kim. They have been doing a really good job just stopping the play at the line, at or behind the line of scrimmage, yeah. rather. And that's really what's been the difference for them defensively versus Episcopal defensively. Not many guys have got behind the defense. Yeah. They completed passes in front of them, and the defense is doing a good job of knocking them down right there like Kim did. Absolutely. Punter's on and a short high punt. Just going to get away with it, and it takes a Highlander roll up to the 33-yard line. So like the first quarter, the second quarter being played mostly on the Episcopal side of the field. The St. Andrews definitely. keeping the pressure on like water on a stone. Yep. The thing is that they've been very fortunate to be in this point, but they have to start capitalizing a little bit more. Then again, Episcopal also has to start changing up their plays and moving it down the field. Also makes you nervous if you're St. Andrews. You're dominating this football game, but it's a one-score game. Yeah, absolutely. Let's see if they can uh, remedy that situation here in this final 334 of the first half. Ball spotted at the 33-yard line. One receiver wide left, two to the near side. Greenberg. Nice play fake. Rolling to his left. Dumps it off underneath. It's complete. To the 30. To the 25. Breaking tackles down to the 23-yard line. Rico Burline, the big guy. Nice play fake by Greenberg to sell that. It was very good. He was so close to getting sacked. But he very well, he got that ball out right where it needed to go. And good job for Verline actually being able to move the ball down the field. They're going to give him a first down in that play. So a 10-yard pickup, first and 10 from the 23. <laughs> Dropping back, looking, firing right side, complete. Inside the 20 to the 15, hit from behind, falls forward to the 11-yard line. Aiden Key with another nice reception, took a couple of shots, but held on. Two consecutive first downs. And yeah, we've got an injured Episcopal player there on the ground. Looks like Logan Lear. They can't afford to lose him. He's 
been one of their mainstays. Uh, he's been the best player on their defense by far. Oh, if he's out, that would be that would be very bad for Episcopal, but for the Highlanders, that would be an opportunity. Hey, he looks like he's okay. They get him up, and he's walking off the field under his own power. It's a nice yeah. round of applause from the crowd. It's always great. You always love to see it when they walk off on their own power. So back-to-back -back first down pickups have the Highlanders in business just outside the 10-yard line. They can pick up a first down still at the 1. So first and 10 from the 11. To receive his wide left one here to the near side. Great yielding here on the near side. Greenberg looks it over. Swings it out left side and a flag is down. Procedure going to be the call here on the Highlanders. Dead ball, so that'll push him back five yards. Oh. It's just a little hiccup on their drive. They can still score. They can still they can still move the ball down the field. Just one tiny little hiccup shouldn't ruin everything. Halftime coming up. Good time to send in an email if you want to give a shout out to your favorite player. Voice of the Vipers, all one word plural. Voice of the Vipers at gmail.com. First and 15 from the 16. The zone comes in motion, handoff up the middle. Nice hole this time. And down to the 10 yard line. Nice run by Sean Goodlett. Got the penalty back and then some. That'll Good. bring a second down and about eight. That's very You see when he was running how big of a hole he had. Right. It's very good. It's a key to really, really good blocking. I think that the major thing is that they're they're knocking on the door. They just have to capitalize here. To receive his wide left, one of the near side, inside of two minutes to go in the half. Hand off, no play action. Rolling over the middle. That ball is incomplete. Almost a spectacular one-handed catch by Tassone. But it falls to the turf, and with 145 to go, it's third down and eight from the 10. Yeah. It could have also easily been intercepted. Yes, it was it just have. a lot, a lot of traffic, a lot of white jerseys where he was looking. So third and eight coming up here for the Highlanders in four down territory, unless they want to try a long field goal. One receiver uh -huh. wide left, two to the near side. In trouble, dumps it off underneath, complete. Inside the 10, down to the six yard line. Nice job there by Aiden Key to come back, help out his quarterback and pick up something. Greenberg was in a bit of trouble there, so. Now you're, now you're in a fourth down, so the question is, what do you run to try to score? Yeah, you got a fourth and seven here from the eight. I think this is the time where you use whatever play you call all reliable. The one I think that'll we're going to have a there. field goal. I see the kicker coming on here. They might have to call a timeout, though, to get this off. They've got five seconds on the play clock. Get the snap off, and the kick is on its way, and they got it through. 42, the kicker is Homero Rangel, and a nice job by Mark Greenberg. That snap was a little low. He got it down. Rangel, with a good concentration from the sophomore, drills it, and we've got an 11 to nothing ball game. He was very close. That ball was very close to being blocked, but it was good concentration on the kicker just to go, and a great swing through. That was from the eight, so that would be a 25-yard field goal attempt. And a nice job by the special teams unit hustling out on the field. Uh, St. Andrews is probably out of timeout, so they would have called one. Uh, well, they might be, but the main thing is this. They get the ball. Episcopal gets the ball to start the second half. 
And what I would do, especially if I'm the Highlanders, what I want to do is I want to get my defense out here. I want to make sure that they don't score anything. Maybe try to see if I can get the ball back in less than a minute. Try to put some more points on the field. Because what you don't want to do is you don't want to have Episcopal score and then get the and ball get back the ball and back. Make, yep. this a, make this a, a game. One minute straight up to go in the half. 11 nothing. St. Andrews on top. Wrangell has just had the field goal. Good kick. Towards the corner and fielded there inside the five. Finder reverses field at the eight. Bounces off one tackle to the ten. And finally Russell down there at the 13 yard line. Great coverage by the Highlanders kick return unit. As a speedy Steven Swan had nowhere to go. Uh, it started off bad with the bounce that went back, and it just got a lot worse. He reversed his field, surrendered a few yards, and he got caught in the back. This is not the best field position they've had. This is typical field position that they've had. But let's see if they can do something right before the half. I think with not a lot of time, less than a minute to go, let me just throw it up and see what you can get. 48 ticks on the clock. First and 10 from their own 13-yard line. The receiver's wide right. Man com coming in motion right to left. Settles in here on the near side. Dropping back. Looking. Under pressure. Rolling right. And gets by the defense out to the 20 and slides safely in the second base there at the 23-yard line. Heads up place there by Johnny Willingham back in at quarterback. Stop the clock while they move the chains and they'll wind it again. Good. That was a very good run by him, especially the best part was the slide. You don't want to die forward because you can fumble the ball. But sliding there, protect yourself. And there's a timeout on the field, as you see, as Episcopal calls it. Like you said, just trying to get something going here. Definitely try to get something. If I'm the coach for Episcopal, what I'm doing is I'm going over the next few plays, saying, all right, this is what we're going to run here, then we're going to do that, and then we're going to do this. Just so you have a little thing to go because you don't have much time to sit there and huddle. You have to have something. Back in the day when I played football, I had this thing called the Indy Series that right. we studied, we played, you come out, you just run the right play over and over in a no huddle. And it was very, it was fairly successful. It's always an interesting balance at this level. Yeah, if absolutely. You're Episcopal coaches, this is your freshman JV squad. Yep. So you might not approach it the same way you would as on a Friday night. Yeah, it's more yeah. of an educational kind of thing. It is. They are two mismatched teams. One is a varsity. One is a junior varsity. But I think, I think you just have to play every game. Somewhat similarly, yeah, yeah. even though it's a, even though they are a JV team, I would try to make them say, "Hey, this is a varsity style game. You're still in it." One receiver wide right, two to the near side. Willingham dropping back. Good protection this time. Now the pocket breaks down, and he's going to go down. Get back to the line of scrimmage, but that is about it. As Andrew Farmer with his second. Nice play here of the half, and another timeout taken by Episcopal with 32 seconds to go. Ugh. That was not what they were envisioning, and that was definitely not what they drew up. I think that he just got a little, he's a little bit rattled. Highlanders are coming, and they are blitzing very, very well. He had time for a while. Good coverage That's downfield. He really had nowhere to throw the football. So absolutely. As much a coverage sack as anything. Technically not a sack, I guess. He did pick up a yard of the play. Second down and nine from the 25-yard line. One receiver wide right, two to the near side. Willingham dropping back, looking, firing right side. Nice pass this time over the middle. That'll be good for a first down as they get it out to William Stahl. Good coverage by Chi Brown. Really good coverage. 
Episcopal up quickly. They're out of timeouts. They stopped the clock and moved the chains. Now they wind it again. 25 seconds to go. First down at the 36-yard line. That was one of the better plays of the afternoon here for the Eagles. It really was. Same play, almost the same result. This time picking up eight yards, but the clock will continue to move here. Eagles trying to hustle up to the line to get off one more play from the 43-yard line. One more play, maybe a Hail Mary. Two seconds, one. That's they the don't game. get it all, they're going to give it to him. Willingham over the right side, got a receiver streaking in and out oh. of the hands. Boy, he had it. Don't think he would have scored. There were two black shirts there, but that was too close for comfort. Unbelievable. That was exactly what you want. You get a free play. It's right there in his hands, and he just bobbles it and drops it. Trying to look up into the sunlit sky with two black shirts draping on him. We are at halftime. An entertaining first half as football returns here to St. Andrews. Your score at the end of the first half, 11-0 in favor of the Highlanders. We're going to take a break. Just put the microphones down and catch our breath a little bit and uh, carry any sort of halftime festivities that we see here on the field. And otherwise, we'll be back with you for half number two. You're watching St. Highland, uh, St. Andrews Highlanders football on the Vipe Live Network.
Welcome back to Beck Stadium on the campus of St. Andrews. 11 to nothing to score. Merle Berkshire and Joshua Blanche here. The coach, Les Clary, back at the Vibe Live Studios. And uh, we're getting ready for half number two of what's been an interesting ball game. Almost as many mutual turnovers as points on the game. But at Absolutely. least if you're a St. Andrews fan, you've got 11 and they don't. Yep. The only thing that's been good is that it's been a very slow start for both teams. Main thing is that Highlanders are being able to stay in their own territory, stay in uh, opponent territory, just not capitalizing on scoring. Right. And Episcopal on the other side, really got to get something going. They really don't have a lot, you know, a lot to be looked forward to. But it's a new quarter, new half. Maybe they can get something going this time around. As you mentioned uh, before, the halftime break, uh, uh, Dallas Episcopal will get the football first to start the second half. Hey, folks, get ready to go back to school and back to sport at Academy Sports and Outdoors. Shop in store or online at academy.com, and you can find all the hottest sports gear and casual styles from Nike, Adidas, Under Armour, and more. Scoring in the first half. Touchdown pass to Tassone with a two-point conversion as well, made it eight to nothing. And then uh, Romero Rango with a nice 25-yard field goal to extend the lead to 11 to nothing, and that's been it so far. I believe Greenberg was the quarterback on that touchdown pass. Uh, um, so Highlander set to kick it off going from right to left on a warm, muggy day here in Austin, Texas as we close out. August, the week before Labor Day weekend. And a short high pooch kick. That's a live football. Takes a high bounce and field a nice heads up play by Logan Lear. Good to see him back out of the field for Episcopal. All right. This is probably some of the best field position they've had to start. Yeah. Now that they're starting right out here, I think that you've had the time, you've discussed what you've done working. I think you've got to start giving it to Swan and then start building off of that. Yeah, you and I have both seen plenty of games where one team is dominating the first half and the flip gets switched at halftime when uh, the coaches make their adjustments. We'll see who made the proper adjustments. <laughs> so first and 10 for the Eagles. Ball spotted at their own 34 yard. They make it to 35 as they get underway second half. Willing him back in at quarterback. Looks fires over to the right side and a nice sliding catch made there at the 40 yard line. Throwing a little bit behind it, but a nice hands catch there by Hutch Chipman. That's a good football y sounding name. Hutch. Hutch Chipman. Sounds like a good broadcasting name, but definitely something, <laughs> I could do, something you could be hearing right. on Saturdays and Sundays. Pick up a five on the play, second down and five from the 40 yard line. And off left side, trying to turn the corner and cuts it back up. And he's going to have the first down and more, but a flag comes flying in. The officials have had a rough day, but that official's got a heck of an arm. That flag was about 40 <laughs> yards in the air. Well, maybe there's a league for him somewhere. <laughs> Holding the call against the Eagles. That'll wipe out a nice pickup and a first down for Episcopal School of Dallas. Yeah, we'll put the ball back at the 30-yard line. So sort of a spot foul to put it back at the 32-yard line. Hand off right side and gets it out to about the 40. About five yards shy of the first down. It'll be third down and five. Steven Swan on the carry. Again, like they were in the first half, they are kind of doing a little bit of a mixture. They're throwing right. the ball, doing a good, throwing the ball, getting some good yardage, and running it. They don't really have a definitive style just yet. 
Well, that could be a key to the fact that it's still a very early season. So third down and five, chance to get off the field. Looking downfield, fires over to the left side. Caught, that's going to be good for a first down and a good possession here. With the exception of the penalty, Episcopal moving the ball pretty well. Ethan Pham with a nice catch. First down for the Eagles at the 47-yard line. Uh, they're moving it a little bit better than what they did in the first half. Let's see if they can continue that and build off of that. The momentum is not in their favor, but right. they can swing it fairly easily with the score. Ten minutes to go, third quarter on this Saturday afternoon. Willingham, handoff right side. Makes the first man miss into Highlander territory down at the 48-yard line. Swan again. Or to check that. That was uh, Eddie Ellison on the carry. Pick up of about five yards on the play, second and five. The more that I watch this game, the more it feels like they have a, a tandem back there with yeah. Swan and Ellison. One to see a wide left, one to the near side. Handoff left side. Ellison again, and he's going to have first down yards or more inside the 40 to the 35 down to the 32-yard line. You know, if you're a St. Andrews fan, you don't like to see this per se, but it was almost so easy in the first half. It's good that they're getting challenged a little bit here in the second half. We'll see how the defense responds. It really is, and if you're on Episcopal, that's one of the plays that you really, really wanted. You didn't have a lot of big chunk yardage uh, plays down the field, but now they have their first one. The first down and 10 Episcopal School at the 33-yard line of the Highlanders. High formation. Play action. Rolling to his right. Dumps it off underneath the right side. Caught. Gets a nice block on the edge of the 25. Flag comes down. The block was maybe a little bit too good. Holding the call. Oh. I think the initial block was good. And then when the wide receiver, uh, Tham, cut back inside, the block turned into a hold. Yep. And you can't have that, and that just kills your offense. Yes, You're moving does. the ball so well, and then you hit a, a penalty like that. So it'll be a spot foul here. We'll wipe out most of that game. In fact, that'll wipe out all of that game. Except yeah. for about a foot of it. So first and about nine and a half. One to see the wide left, one to the near side. Handoff left side. This is Swan back in the ball game. Reverses field. Now bounce it to the outside of the 25. And inside the 20 to the 15. All the way down near the 10-yard line. Good running there by Steven Swan. Oh. It looks very sharp on that play. I don't know if the Highlanders have... I don't know if they have a, a question or an answer, rather, for Swan, right. but they definitely seem like they don't at this point. Well, you said early in the first half that that was their, their you know, they had been having the best results going to him, yep. and they are riding that train right now. First and goal from the 10. Eye formation again up under center. Hand off right side. This time, good penetration, and he's going to fall forward for a couple of yards. That time it was Ellison as they do the one-two punch. Picks up a yard, second and goal from the nine. They've done great on this job, just moving the ball around and definitely making sure that both Ellison and Swan both have a chance to run the ball. Clock rolling, 7.24 and counting to go, third quarter. Highlanders up by 11, but Eagles threatening to cut into that lead. They're close, they're knocking on the door. We'll see what they come out with this time. 
The receiver's wide left, and a flag comes in. Delay a game, I think. Play clock is showing zero. Yep, delay a game. That'll push him back five yards. One of the things that we've seen so much in this game is both teams can't really have a momentum. They have momentum and a penalty or a turnover kind of just derails it. Yep. And it makes it null and void. So now second to go back at the 15-yard line. It gets a little bit more difficult. Dropping back. William fires over the left side. Complete. Makes a spin move inside to the seven, down to the five, and fall all the way down to about the three-yard line. All right. Now they're officially knocking on the door. Yes, they are. Nice run after the catch there by Chipman. Chipman with the catch. And if you're this close in your Episcopal School of Dallas, I don't think you settle for a field goal on fourth down. I think you're going to try to punch it in. I know you got to get the three somehow, but. You definitely try to score a touchdown here. Worry about the three later. And off right side, one man to beat, and he runs to the tackle into the end zone, and Episcopal School of Dallas is on the board. Good run by Eddie Ellison. As he and Steven Swan complimented each other nicely on that drive. And the Eagles are right back in the football game, 11-6 with the extra point pending. That was a great drive by them. They were able to get the ball early and just move down the field. Despite the fact that they did have some very careless penalties, they were able to move the ball down the field. They must have had something different in that Gatorade down right. there <laughs> <laughs> at halftime. I believe this is Daniel Mattis on for the extra point. Good snap and hold. Kick looks good from here, and he drives it through. Out of the hold of Xander Nelson. And with 5.36 to go, although the clock is still rolling, which is odd, it's 11 to 7. So the Highlander defense will gather on the sidelines and figure out what the heck happened on that drive and hopefully fix it for the next one. That's Absolutely. all you can do. That's all you can really do. But the best thing about it in all of its entirety, they're still up in this game. They yeah. still have the momentum. They just have to have a really good drive, not necessarily score, but maybe chew the clock a little bit. And what's interesting is, yeah, it's, it's early, midway through the third quarter, yeah. but Episcopal School of Dallas electing to kick the extra point for one instead of trying the two to get it back to a three-point game. I think they have their confidence that they can actually do this again and go down the field and score right. to win rather than try to tie it. Cool. That's called confidence in your players. So the Highlander defense gives up their first points of the season, and we'll see how the offense responds to that. That assistant coach is not wearing boat shoes. Trying uh, to light the proverbial fire under his team. You got to light the fire somehow. Yep. It can sometimes be a little bit too easy. It was only an 11 nothing game, but you got the feeling that uh, the Highlanders were dominant in that first half. And... Sometimes you just think you can come out and repeat and do it again, and the other team has something to say about that. Yeah. We're in 11-0 game at that point. The ball goes, I think, out of bounds. And we'll see if the Highlanders just are content to take it at the 35. We saw what happened to the Eagles yeah. when they uh, tried to force a re-kick. thought they could do better. They did not. But to the point, I, I think the Highlanders, they really should be up more than what they are. They were in red zone a lot longer, yep. a lot more. And they only came away with 11 points. So if you're Episcopal, what you're thinking is, you know what, that was good. Although we did give up points, we're still in this game. Now this is going to be a game that can be down to the wire, especially if your defense can figure it out.
So first down and 10 from the 30. Mark Greenberg and company take the field. One receiver wide, right two to the near side. Swings it out here, complete to the near sideline. Breaking the first tackle, We're trying to reverse field, giving up some ground. And this will be an interesting spot by the officials. I think that he had it out to about the 35 yard line, but when he tried to reverse field, he gave up some of that. And it's gonna turn into what's actually a one yard pickup to Luke Precourt. Um, you really hate it when that happens. Yeah. I know a lot of times when we watch and we see on Sports Center somebody jukes out and comes out for a big play, and sometimes it works, and other times it hurts your team. Play action dumped over the middle, incomplete. Nice design. Trying to get it quickly over the middle to Luke Cottrell. But it hits the turf and brings up a third down, 39 from the 31 yard line. This play, while it is just a third down, this play has a lot of implications on yes, how the rest of this game will go. Highlanders trying to get the momentum back. The Episcopal trying to get the stop and get their offense back on the field. Third down and nine. Play action. Swings it here to the near side. Come in and out of the hand. Oh, batted down at the line of scrimmage. Good play there by Blake Hudson. That Setting up a fourth down. The punting unit will come on here for St. Andrews. And that is the momentum shift that Episcopal yeah. was looking for. Now your offense is going to come out. And because it was only a three and out, the defense should be still fairly tired after a long drive. It is really hot out. And a high punt over to the left side. Takes a Highlander roll all the way inside the 40. Maybe picked up a yard or two too early there, but pretty good punt. 10, 20, about 35 yards, no return. But Episcopal will have the football back and a chance to drive for the lead for the first time since the first drive of the ball game. Yep. We'll see what kind of adjustments the coaching staff made after that last nifty drive by the Eagles. Dropping back, pressure coming, fires over the left side. That ball's picked off! Oh, That's wow. a pretty good adjustment right there. And trying to break free, he can't, <laughs> but intercepted nicely by Chet King. Beautiful coverage. Got himself in position like he was blocking out a, on a rebound and hauls it in. That was a great. It looked like it looked like it, he caught it with only one hand. They did a really good job of pressuring him. But the main thing, the most important thing, is that they made it hard for him to pick a receiver. Right. They made sure everybody was covered, and that was just a great play by King. So the offense gets it back with 4.20 to go third quarter. First and 10 for the Highlanders at their own 33-yard line. Let's see what they have in their bag of tricks. High snap, handoff up the middle. And good second and third effort, pushing the pile forward across the 35, all the way out to the 38-yard line. What looked like a yard or two pickup turns into about a five-yard pickup, and we've got an injured Highlander down in the field.
trying to get a look and see who the injured player is. It's one of the linemen. He's sitting up. It looks like a leg injury of some sort. Not going to speculate, but let you know that he at least is sitting up. You always hate to see it. You hate to see any kind of injury, mm -hmm. whether it's to your team or to the other team. Injuries, they're just, they're just terrible. They get him to his feet. Looks like 74, the injured player, Jude Croson. Trying to put some weight on that left wheel. Good that he can put any weight on it at all. That's a good sign. And we certainly wish him young, uh, that young man well. Sophomore. That rugby pile, you know, pushing forward. Could have got stepped on, could have got twisted. Yeah. Well, you like to see those rugby piles. You always hate it when somebody gets hurt in them. It's always just a lot of big bodies and a lot of momentum shifting in there. Definitely hope he is okay. Rosen gets a nice hand from the crowd. He'll make his way to the bench where the trainers will look at it a little bit more extensively. As we get back to play here, second down and five from the 38-yard line. Dropping back, looking, firing over to the left side. That ball is picked off the other way. This might be a pick six to the 20, to the 10, to the 5, and to the end zone touchdown. Eddie Ellison had a running, rushing touchback. Earlier, this time he gets a pick six, and Episcopal School of Dallas is in the lead at 13-11. That seems to be, well, that may not be the, before the game. Looks like a cramp side. in the end zone by one of the Eagles players as he tried to run off the field. It is hot. It's 93, 94 degrees and muggy. It is. It's not a... Well, you love football in August. Football in August are not always the best uh, <laughs> best to go together. But back to the pick six, that was very, that's very, that was really good. When you're a corner and you intercept the ball, you always want to just run to it, run to the interception. <laughs> Coach is trying to get the crowd fired up. There have been a little... <laughs> A little quiet here, a little warm out there too in the sun. So now the new question is, if you're St. Andrews, what do you do now? Because you were leading this game 11 to nothing, and now in just a few short minutes and one quarter, yeah. now you're down two points, pending three. Good to see you've got plenty of time to work with. 3.44 left third quarter. Working out the cramp in the end zone. The young man gets up to his feet. That is uh, T.J. Gassel, sophomore. Big extra point here. Trying to make it a field goal uh, lead. Good snap and hold, kick is up. Low line driver knocks it through. So, with 344 to go in the third quarter, when these 
four. So Alden Rogers, I think, is that kicker. If I could read that number, it's kind of scrunched up on the jersey, but with 3.44 to go in the third quarter, it's a three-point lead now for the visitors. Ah. I don't know what St. Andrews has planned, but I definitely know that they have to go to their bag of tricks. I think they have to try to catch them off guard, try to catch Episcopal a little bit off guard. Well, momentum is a fickle thing. He can switch back just like that. Just like that. Well, the best thing I think right now is, especially if you're the Eagles, I think the big thing about it now is that because it was a pick six, your offense still gets a little bit of time to rest. Right. And that means when they get the ball back, whenever it is, they will have enough power, enough energy, they'll be well rested to go all uh, at full cylinder. Well, I liked your plan in the pregame about the clouds taking over, but that's not happening. Uh, well, it was wishful thinking at the time. <laughs> Ball fell off the tee. Fell off the tee, yeah. Which is always odd, especially because there's not there's not a lot of wind here today. Trying to get just the right lean on it. Yep. Pretty good kick this time. Sails inside the 10, dropped it, picked it up. Off the near sideline to the 15, reversing field, out across the 20, look out to the 25 to the 30. Nice return out to the 34-yard line. Didn't look like it was going to be much, and that's going to be a oh, flag. That's some pushing and shoving yep. down there. And now a second flag. Good return by Chet King, and then definitely a push in the back on the Episcopal player. That should have been a 15-yard penalty. I hope they don't call an offset here if something was said. I think the main thing on it was at the end of the play, down at the bottom of the screen, with two players, one from each side, and they were really getting into it, pushing and shoving, and if it escalated any more, it could have been an all-out brawl. Yeah, that's what happened. And that's a learning experience for the Highlanders player. Yep. He had the 15-yard penalty because he got shoved in the back. If he walks away, it's a penalty on Episcopal. But something was said in front of the official, and the second flag came out, turned it into an offsetting penalty. Yeah, you have to, you know, the football and all sports are games of motion. Unchecked emotion is a really, really bad thing. I know right. that he may have said something, but you have to have to walk away. Can't hurt your team that right. way. Still a nice return, and the Highlanders have the ball in good field position at the 34-yard line. That doesn't change. Yeah, they do. They could have had another 15 yards on top of it. Absolutely, and that would have been very bad. So trailing for the first time this afternoon, first time this season, the Highlanders take over. First down 10 at the 34-yard line. Firing over here to the near side, uh, incomplete. A little bit off the mark was Mark Greenberg. Oh, you see it all the time in college and uh, high school, middle school, elementary, peewee, wherever you see it. You always see those guys try to catch it with one hand. You know, right. Odo makes it cool, but I always say, you know, it is cool to catch it with one. Catching it with two is just as good. Second down and 10 from the 34. Dropping back, looking left, dumps it off underneath, complete to the 38-yard line, makes the miss out across the 40, hanging out of the football as he takes the big hit there at the 41-yard line. Nice catch and run in traffic by Luke Precourt. It'll be third and four from the 40-yard line. I think it was a really good... Uh, the most important thing is that he was able to hold on to the ball. I'm right. knowing a lot of those hits, when you get hit, the ball just kind of comes out and just is right there on the sideline, right in between where the sideline is and where the play is. Third down and four from the 40, dropping back, handoff right side. Can he get the corner turn? No, he cannot. Good pursuit there. By, oh, he got a second effort. 
out to the 43-yard line. Good effort there by Sean Goodlett. But still going to be about two yards shy of the fourth down. Fourth and two. I know it's tempting, but, man, you got to punt this football. You have to. I know that you're down, but you have to have faith in your defense to try to turn the field around a little bit. Because going for it now is just it, you're playing with fire, essentially. Right. No hesitation, not surprisingly. Yep. Thanks again to Les Clary back at the Comfy Cozy Vibe Live Studios, better known as his living room. Kick caught in the dead run, makes the first man miss up to the 40 to the 45. Reverses field across the midfield stripe, now given ground. And he is going to go down right there at the 49-yard line. Good return by Steven Swan. And Episcopal's got good field position across the midfield stripe to start this drive with 139 to go third quarter. This quarter has been all Eagles. Yep. It's been all Episcopal the entire quarter. Let's see what they have now. A real nice drive to open the uh, quarter. And then a pick six. That's put the visitors from Dallas in the lead for the first time. Rod trying to inspire the defense to get the stop. They desperately need a stop. They can't afford another score. Whittingham handoff right side. Breaks through the first tackle across the 45 to the 40. And almost forcing a fumble down to the 34-yard line. On the stop is Gray Elin. Jaime De La Garza Montfort had a piece of that and almost forced that football to come out. I saw it squirming in the arms there. Uh, a couple of strides from being gone, a couple of seconds away from a fumble. They've been very fortunate thus far. Goes as a 15-yard pickup, however. One receiver wide left, one to the near side. Up under center is Willingham. Hand off left side, right up the middle, big hole. The offensive line starting to open some holes now for the running game. It's a five-yard pickup for Ellison before Andrew Farmer is there to wrap him up. Second and five. It is, it is crazy. You would have thought that at the end of the half that the Eagles were just, you know, that they were not as great of a team. They weren't even, they didn't even have very many plays in opponent territory. And now here they are leading the game, driving. And St. Andrews does not have a way to stop them. Hit her to the fullback. You don't see that very often. Down to the 26-yard line. It's going to be about a yard shy of the first down. First carry of the ball game for Vaughn Langston, the fullback. Planted by Max Flint, who's had a good game here today with a couple of interceptions. But a big third down coming up here for the Highlander defense. Third and two from the 26-yard line. Clock is ticking down. I think that's going to be the final play of the quarter here. Very well might be. If you're a Highlanders fan, you're hoping it is because the third quarter has not been kind to you. It has not. And that is the end of three. So at the end of three quarters of play, your new score, the Eagles of Episcopal School of Dallas, 14, and the St. Andrews Highlanders, 11. We'll flip sides of the field and play the final 12 minutes of regulation time. More high school football coming up tonight on Flow Sports, powered by Vibe. Get you that schedule here. I got to get back up to it. I'm in preseason form. I should have had that ready to go. Yeah, Flutterville versus someone. I can't yeah, remember. Yeah, Flutterville taking on Laredo United down in San Antonio. There we go. Michael Rose and Melvin Jones will have the call of that one. Aldi MacArthur taking on Fort Ben Austin. James Kovaleski and Enrique Rodriguez with the call. And the Episcopal Knights, that'll be of interest uh, to both of these schools. The Episcopal Knights taking on Parish Episcopal. 
Uh, that game is on Vibe. That one is not on the Pay-Per-View Flow Network. That'll be on Vibe.com at 6 o'clock. Kipner, Fort Bend Kipner taking on Dulles on Vibe as well. So closing out week number one in style here on Vibe Live and Flow Sports. One quarter left in this one. Rolling right, looking, firing over to the right side, complete to the 25-yard line, to the 20, to the 15, to the 10, and shoved out of bounds. Got it out to Ethan Pham, and it's going to be first and goal. Episcopal has figured this out, Joshua. They definitely have. I don't know what it was, but that was some good adjustments by their coaching staff because St. Andrews does not have – they don't seem to have any answers defensively, and they did in the first half. And we got a timeout. Timeout going to be taken here by the Highlanders. As Episcopal School of Dallas was six yards away from opening up a, at least a nine, if not a ten-point lead. Absolutely, and that's the one thing that you don't want because you can deal with a, a single-point right. lead, but, you know, one-possession lead. Once you get to double digits, two-possession leads, then you have to start thinking about not only this drive and every subsequent drive. You want to take it one play at a time, but once you are down by – 10 points or more, you can't, you very well can't do that. Happy to have you with us here on a Saturday afternoon. Good to be back on the campus of St. Andrews. Felt like we lived down here last year with all the, all the streaming. We did cross country, did we track, a bunch of basketball, a bunch of lacrosse. The one thing we didn't really get a chance to do was football. Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't a lot of a lot a lot of football last season, but so glad that it's back and so glad that it's football season once again. First and goal, defense looking to force us a turnover, get a stop of some form here. Willing him in the shotgun. Looking, firing right side and juggled and did he get it in the end zone? He did not. Completion to uh, William Stahl, but the defense closed, kept him out of the goal line. It's going to bring up a second goal from about the two. I think that I think the Eagles know exactly what they're going to do. The thing is, I think they're just waiting for the right formation or the right look from the defense to say, "All right, this is exactly what we're going to do." If they want to give it off to either Swan or. Uh, <laughs> hell of a sin. Uh, he's in there right now, number 22, Steven Swan. Second and goal, ball spotted at the three officially. And a busted play, and it's going to go back to the sack at the eight-yard line. Looks like a little confusion on the exchange, and Gus Stratton was there to helpfully make sure that it didn't go any further. Yeah, it looked like it was – it looked very – Odd because it looked like he was pushed into his own center. Yeah. As soon as the ball was snapped, somehow so the ball got hung up between the quarterback and the center. There. You don't see that often. Goes as a loss of three and a key third down and goal coming up from the five yard line. Highlight is trying to make the goal line stand. Hand off right side. Swan is going to go. No. Oh, he broke free and managed to get back to the three. They had him in the backfield. But he broke three and managed to squirm and pick up a couple yards, and it looks like he might be hurt. Boy, I hope that's not the case. Oh. Looks like it might be a cramp the way he's moving his legs there trying to. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. And, boy, once that starts. Yeah, you know that it just, it just hurts. And like Les said, if it's 95 degrees in the air, it's 105 down there in that field. <laughs> And it's probably humid because it's been watered. Yep. It's just, it's, it's a lot of unfortunate circumstances for this game. And it's the first game of the year, so you're yep. not, might not be in 100% shape yet. Yeah, you're not 100% conditioned, so still have a lot of things to work out. All right, he's getting up. That's good to see. Good. Steven Swan, the sophomore, have to come out for a play which is important because it's fourth and goal from the three. 
This is where you make your money if you're the Highlanders because if you stop them, yeah. if you stop them, you can change momentum and go. And if you don't, you're down 10 or possibly more. Biggest play of the game coming up right here. Johnny Willingham up under center. Rolling to his right, looking towards the end zone, batted away. Beautiful job by Sean Goodlett, reading the play perfectly. Stuck the right hand in there, pulls it away, turnover on downs, and the Highlanders are alive. Now that's what you needed. Stop the clock, stop the clock. Stop the clock. All right, good job there by the Highlander defense. That's the good news. The bad news is you're 97 yards away. Yeah, but you can still get there. You, know, you can still get, get there, there, exactly. Highlanders take over the ball inside their own five. Takes one really big play. Oh, there you go. Yeah, they're pretty directional. <laughs> it takes one really big play, and you can get down there. So operating underneath the shadow of their own goalpost for the first time today, St. Andrews trying to drive for the lead. And now whistles blow. Oh, false start. Yeah, that'll only cost them a yard and a half, half the distance. But it makes any sort of exchange between the center and the quarterback even more precarious. Uh, they have to be absolutely perfect yep. because if they fumble it, or someone who causes a penalty in the end zone, that's a safety. Yeah. Greenberg up under center here as they're operating from about their own one and a half yard line. Actually, he's in the shotgun about three or four yards deep in the end zone. Handoff. And fumble. And it looks like he fell right back on the football. Boy, Boy. that was too close for comfort. Ball popped out of the arms of Jaime de la Garza Montfort and bounced right back in. Luckily, he fell right back on right. it, but and they're still alive. They just have to have to protect the ball, and that's a lot. It is a lot of pressure, but you have to remember that. Ball spotted at the one. They've got to get it out to about the 13. So second and 12. Dropping back, looking, firing over the right side. Got a receiver. Couldn't connect with him. It sailed over his head. Trying to get it out to Rico Berline, who was looking over his left shoulder, and the ball was actually over on the right side. And that'll bring up a third and 12 from about the one. It's always hard to throw them when you're in your own end zone because even if they're not blitzing or they're bringing only two or three guys, there's still the pressure of if there's a penalty in the end zone, if, yep. you, miss, you, know, if you mishandle the ball. So that can cause the people to throw the ball too far and have it sail. Third and 12. Pass complete uh, to about the five yard line. Minimal gain, but at least it gives them a few extra yards to work with on the punt. There's still plenty of time in this game, nine and a half to go. Uh, there's still a lot of time in this game. You don't have to worry, you don't have to panic. The most important things are one, the defense has to get another stop. And two, you have to make sure that they can do it with enough time for you to get the ball back. Senior Rico Berline set the punt. This one will have his heels just inside the end line. Return man for the Eagles is standing at the Highlander 35-yard line. And they're not going to get the playoff. It's going to be a delay of game. So all those yards they got on that last play, they're going to give up right here. Mm. You hate to see it. It's the hardest thing to do in football is getting special teams on the field. Yep. And when you're, you know, rebuilding a program, those are the kind of things that have come last. Yeah, you always want to try to find your quarterback and a great defense first. Yep. 
But you always should have your special team somewhat ready for at any given moment. High snap. Burline does a good job getting it and getting it out of there. Pretty good punt. Wow, nicely done. Takes a Highlander roll. Field it on the dead run inside the 30 and out of bounds to the 28-yard line. So nice job, Rico Burline, fielding the high snap and got, getting about as good a punt as he could get out of there. And with 8.33 to go, the Highlander defense has got to make another stop. Eagles will set up shop. Inside Highlander right. territory. Defense needs to get a stop of some sort. Maybe a sack or maybe they'll get lucky and get one of the fumbles that they had earlier yep. in the game. Because remember in the first quarter, there was a little bit of an issue right. with the Eagles. They had two consecutive plays where that ball just sailed. Willingham in the shotgun. Swan back in the game behind him. The play action him rolling to his right is Willingham. Looking downfield, looking and fires over to the right side. Complete to a safety battle of the 25-yard line, down to the 24. Take what you can get, about a six-yard pickup, second and four. And now he's down as the cramping really starting to become prevalent here as this game wears on. Uh, the heat, the heat is not on their side today. That's one thing to play in con or, uh, practice in conditions like this for uh, in a couple of hours. But yep. To play in it is play much, it much is, different, yeah. especially high pace and full contact. Right in the middle of the day. Yep. I think they were ho hoping and wanting this game to have been tonight. I think that's one of those situations with travel involved and that kind of thing. Yep. It'll be second and five when we come back. Ball spotted at about the 25-yard line. Eight seventeen to go. I don't know where the weather app on my laptop is located, but it is not Austin, Texas. <laughs> it says it's 84 degrees. Uh, is that metric degrees? Uh, maybe, you know, maybe in a different life, uh, past <laughs> life, it was 84 degrees. Might have been 84 degrees this morning. But it's 84 degrees somewhere, but not here. Definitely not here. One persistent cramp. Taking uh, a long time to work that one out. Yeah. And it looks like he got him up and running. Ethan Pham, who caught that pass. Puts his hands up. Say he's okay. So back to it here, the defense trying to get a stop. Second and five from just inside the 25. From the 25 yard line. Willingham in the shotgun. Single back lined up behind him, that is Swan. Dropping back, looking, firing over the right side, going forward in the far corner, that ball is, I think it was intercepted. Intercepted in the end zone. They took a shot and they paid for it. Hauling it in was Chet King, the senior. And the Highlanders get it back with 7.47 to go. That's exactly what they needed. That is exactly what they needed. And I loved it. He caught it over the shoulder. Yep. It was a 50-50 ball. Actually, I don't think it was 50-50. I think it was 100% shaky. He looked more like the wide receiver. Yep. 
So the ball will be spotted at the 20. Interception with a touchback. So now you're the offense. You're not in such dire circumstances. You can actually run your offense here from the 20 yard line. Yep. You don't have to be so conservative about it, trying to just get right. out and try not to get the safety. But you do still have to remember that the clock is no longer on your side anymore. Right. So you have to be very, very time efficient with what you're doing. So the defense has done their job at two big stops. The offense has got to answer. Dumps it off underneath complete here on the near side to the 25 and out to the 26-yard line. Rico Berline with the six-yard pickup, second and four. You know what's fun? You can hear the crowd get excited as soon as he caught that ball. Yep. They know he's a big guy and he's going to run over people. That's what you like. You like a really big guy, kind of like a Rob Gronkowski kind of type. Which is funny because he's actually wearing number 87 as well. And off up the middle. And steps over to the outside and gets, gets a yard or two. Uh, Sean Goodlett. Going to bring up a third down at about three. They have such a good amount of time. They can very well afford to go down the field if they truly wanted to. 6.40 to go. Dropping back, looking. Dumps it off underneath again to good let. Out to the 30. That's got first down yards and more. Out to the 36-yard line. That'll be good for a Highlander first down. And a flag comes in after the play. Crowd is reacting like it might be on Episcopal. If so, that would tack on another 15 yards. See the players conversating with the officials to figure out what happened. I'm going to say holding on uh, St. Andrews. Holding on St. Andrews. That's just. That was odd. I assume that it could have been. Receivers maybe downfield? Yeah, I thought it was an illegal block downfield or maybe unsportsmanlike conduct possibly, but I didn't really see the hold. I didn't either. They just marked off 15 yards. Holding's only 10. So what is, what's the call? I have no idea. That's a little peculiar. So the ball spotted all the way back at the 35 yard line. Actually the 30 yard line is third and 10. That was odd. So odd. Pass complete over the left side, and it's going to go nowhere. It's going to actually lose a couple yards back to the 18-yard line. Try to get it to Chasson. Looks like number, what is that, 85, Kent Lanyon. Looks like he got a hand on it, just couldn't go with it. That is very, very that peculiar. That was a big penalty because that wiped out a first down. Momentum was kind of coming back to the Highlanders. Yeah. The only thing is the coaches on the near side didn't erupt. Yep. So something must have happened. A high snap, Berline. It's a nice punt out of there. It's going to be a high. Very high. Forward, but oh, that might be a live football. Look, someone touched it. Pick it up. No. Yeah. It's going to stay with the uh, Eagles. I, the Highlanders uh, bench is saying that uh, it was touched. It looked as if it was touched by somebody. I thought it was too. Now 
Now they'll walk in at 10 yards up the field. Are they going to say it touched one of the Highlanders players? Or are they switching out footballs? They may be switching out footballs, but it looked this has been a very peculiar last, I want to say, five minutes. They spotted the ball all the way at the 42-yard line of the Highlanders. What in the world? This doesn't it make any sense because... Unless they grazed a Highlander player. I didn't see that at all. I, I thought it had grazed someone, but I didn't see who it was. Handoff, right side, trying to turn the corner at the 40 and out of bounds at about the 38-yard line. Well, this officiating crew will be graded. They all are. And the first thing at the top of the scorecard should be make your call, be definitive about it, let people know what it is. Yeah, we have no idea why that penalty happened, and we definitely don't know why they spotted the ball where they did. That's two consecutive calls by the officials that have made this game very... A very open game. And they might be the right call, but you've got to sell the call. Exactly. Second down and seven. Handoff, left side. Inside the 40, cuts it back up inside the 35. Dragon tackles down to the 31 yard line. And the clock now is definitely the Highlanders' enemy as we come up at the 514 mark. Still rolling here in regulation time. 14 11. Eagles with 14 unanswered points in the third quarter. A long drive and a pick six in the span of about two minutes. New quarterback in the game. This is Andrew Nelson back in. Handoff right side. Skipping his way inside the 25, down to about the 23-yard line. Eddie Ellison, he's got a touchdown run. Oh, no, and that was a... Yeah, another cramp. Well, he got up. He has two of them down. Made it off the field in his own power, but it helped to come out of play because they had to stop play. And they'll wind the clock at 4.30 to go. Second and three from the 25-yard line. Defense looking for another big stop. They've got to get it quick. Handoff up the middle. And down near the first down marker at the 22-yard line, the up back. Vaughn Langston yeah, on the carry. Crazy. Third and one. Inside of four minutes left. Well, we're inside four minutes. If you're the Highlanders, you have to get a stop here because it's all or nothing. They score on this player, get a first down. Yep. You can probably say that this game is out of reach for them. Up under center. Rolling to his right, looking downfield, under pressure, gets by. I think I saw a flag, I did, so scampering out of bounds and losing two yards. Holding is right. probably going to be the call. If it is holding, do you, take the, do you take the fourth down or do you let him have the opportunity to get it again? Yeah, it's fourth and three. It's a short yard. I think you would probably go ahead and push him back. Yeah, it's a little too third. close for comfort. Where, wait, whoa, wait, whoa. What, what's, How is what's it holding the on the defense and the ball's moving there? Wait a minute. Yeah. I don't. You can't have holding on the defense on a pass play. Oh, no, and now. Uh, now. 
I have never seen that before. I've never seen that either. You can't have. You can't have holding on the defense if there's not a pass. I. Yeah. In all my years of watching football, I have never seen something like this before. Wow. All right, we got another stoppage of play. So the ball is spotted at the five-yard line. I have to say it shouldn't be at the five. It should no. be the other way. It should be at least at the at least at the twenty-five or, or farther back. So three twenty-eight left. Yes. First and goal at the five. Rolling right. Another flag oh, another comes down. Flag. We'll see if this is on the defense, too, as he gets into the end zone, close to the end zone. They're going to call the same thing again. Well, will they, will they tell us this time? On the They're calling out the defense again. Holding on the defense again. I. The coaches on the near side are losing their minds. I. I would be too if I was a coach. I. You try to do everything right, and sometimes you're playing against the team, and sometimes it feels like you're just fighting the officials. So it's first and goal at about the four. And off left side, cutting it back up and digging towards the goal line. No, that's no sign yet. Nope, not quite in yet. Now that the defense is playing their guts out and they're on the field a lot longer than they should have had to have been. And now we're getting a cramp on this side of the field. I'm going to ask Les Clary, our QA. He's done a lot of officiating in his day. I can't think of any explanation for holding on the defense. I cannot. And to call it twice on the same drive. That's a eight. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay, well. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, let's just throw back no. Ball was not in the air. Should not have been holding. You hear the crowd tell them to hold the D uh, to hold the D to hold. Second goal from the one-yard line. Hand off left side, and he's not going to get it. He get it in. He did touchdown. So Eddie Ellison with his second score of the day ups the lead now to 20 to 11 with under three minutes to go. Daniel Matt is on to add the extra point, trying to make it a 10-point game. <laughs> High snap, good hold, kick is up. Had plenty of leg. 
and he drives it through. So two minutes, 57 seconds left in this one. The first half belonging to the Highlanders, the second half belonging to the Eagles. Unbelievable. And now another flag here. Is this just a flag ball at this point? <laughs> Well, he ain't disqualified. Yeah, he had, uh, I'm, I'm guessing one of the players said something he shouldn't have said on the way by. and I certainly understand the frustration, but that's the coach's job. Yep. Now the coach is trying to get, uh, Coach Reed's trying to get an explanation from the officials. Probably not just on that, but that whole sequence. That entire drive was just a lot of questionable calls. Not only were the calls questionable, they weren't being communicated. Judging from the body language, the explanation is not satisfying. <laughs> <laughs> They cannot be satisfied. watched a lot of football in my life and this is just makes you scratch ahead. Right. This officiating is just making you scratch ahead and wonder. Uh -huh. But it seems like these fans don't believe that it's over. There's still time. What's that old song that old song things that make you go hmm? <laughs> <laughs> there is time but you got to work quick. 21-11 you've got to get a quick score get an onside kick and Do yeah. something again. It ain't over till it's over. And they still have a lot of fight. They have a good they have to have a good play calling. Work very well down the field. So with the uh, unsportsmanlike call uh -huh. on What the uh, PAT, after the PAT, the ball will be kicked here from the 40-yard line of okay. the Highlanders. That actually makes sense. <laughs> it doesn't make a lot of sense, actually. What is that? That's 30, 30 yards worth of penalties. So there must oh. have been two, two fouls. Both in force. Huge. That is a huge. You might as well. Yeah, I would, I would, I would onside kick it. You have really have nothing yeah, to lose. You really don't. And it and is to the far sideline, and uh, it's actually a loose football. I think the Highlanders managed to get on it. They had three. No, they didn't. Maybe not. Too much of a good thing. There were three black shirts there, and neither one of them could control. They got in each other's way, and the Episcopal Eagles will get it back here. At the 29-yard line. Oh. This is... So the defense back on the field here. The ball spotted at the 19-yard line. I know the defense is tired, oh, but they, they have to get be. a stop. And off left side. New running back in the ball game. Bounce it to the right side. Takes it. Breaking free inside the 15. Down to about the 10, 11-yard line. That was Carson Boyd. His first carry of the afternoon. And we've got another cramp or another injury on the play. I shouldn't assume it's a cramp.
Unbelievable. Yeah, it's been a long game, a lot of heat. You just kind of wish they can get out of this one without any more, anyone getting seriously hurt yeah. or tempers flaring anymore. A lot has happened in this game. A lot of the first half was a lot of turnovers, and second half it's been a lot of flags and a lot of questionable calls throughout. All right, the injured player, Rico Berline, he's coming off the field under his own power. He's jogging off the field. Well, at least it was for a split. He's had a good ball game. So first and goal here for the Eagles. And off right side. Digging towards the goal line. Still pushing, still pushing, and he is not quite going to get there. Going to bring up a second and goal to come up to the two-and-a-half-minute mark. Defense playing for a little bit of pride here. They don't want the score to look worse than this game has actually been. This game has been fairly close throughout. Just a couple of really tacked on points from Episcopal. Second and goal from about the two. Hand off left side and he is not going to get there. Beautiful job by the defense. Good job, defense. Tough play by Jaime de la Garza Montfort to deny Milan Olsen. I have to say, that is a mouthful for a name. <laughs> <laughs> and he's shaking up on the play. So you're getting a cramp from somebody on just about every play at this point. Just about. But you know what? We're getting to that point in the game. It's towards the end of the game, so it's understandable. So Della Garza Montfort coming off the field. The juniors had a pretty physical game down there. He's Third there. down. <laughs> Third and goal from about the two. Blingham up under center. Hand off right side. And he is not going to get there. It's going to bring up a fourth down. Whether they score or not in this drive, this is a gutsy stand by the defense. Stewart Kim getting up from the bottom of the pile, the senior. The ball's on the goal line, fourth and goal. They have to get a stop here. They need it, and 
And timeout going to be taken by the Highlanders. Trying to preserve some clock if they can get the ball back. Most definitely. I say that if you can get the off the field, get the stop, I think the best thing to do is just go with what's been working for you. Bring in some of your best players that are not injured and go down the field as quickly as you can. Let me look this up here before I open my big mouth, try to figure out when the next uh, home broadcast will be here for St. Andrews. I think it's the 10th, but I wouldn't swear to it. It is on a Thursday night, Thursday, September 9th, as the St. Andrews Crusaders will take on their neighbors from across the streets, the JV squad from Regions Academy. That'll be at 6.30 here on Vipe Live. All right, here you go. This is for all the marbles. Fourth and goal from the one. Willingham, handoff up the middle. I don't think so. I, yeah, he got it in. He managed to get it on the second effort. Highlanders didn't make it easy on him. He had to earn that one. Looked like Mullen Olsen, the freshman, finally punched it in to make the score 27 to 11. That score looks a lot worse than this game has been. It really does. You have to remember, though, the Highlanders were very much so in control in the first half. And like we were saying at halftime, had they maybe capitalized on some of those drives inside, maybe this would be a little bit of a closer game. Yeah. What's been on the field and what's on the scoreboard are two completely different games. Good snap and hold. Kick is up. And knocking it through is Alden Rogers to make it 28-11 with 107 left in this one. Well, again, well. this is a learning experience for this program. They'll get the ball back with about a minute to go. You forget about the scoreboard, and you pretend like you've got to drive for the win here. Yep, you definitely do. Maybe this is also a time that you get some guys that haven't had uh, a lot of experience right. in the game today, get them some reps. But definitely got to keep your head up high. They did a great job offensively, and they did a great job defensively being very physical. This is something to build upon. So oh, yeah. This is a very good learning experience. And despite a few... Uh, minor officiating issues, as we'll call it. They were they played a very good game, sol very solid game from top to bottom. And to be clear, I mean, Episcopal took the lead by making plays. They had the drive to get on the board. They had the pick six, so they were up 14-11. They were. So, you know, it's, it's not like the officials handed them the game, but they helped on that go-ahead drive. They and definitely And then they penalties did. set up the short field position on the outside kick, so... They came out from halftime with uh, just a different determination yeah, they coming did. out, and they turned uh, in the points. There was no turning back once they got in the end zone. Good kick this time. Going to sail back to the goal line. Bring it up to the 20, to the 25, to the 30. Breaks three out across the 35 to the 40. Nice return out to the 42-yard line by Sean Goodlett. Kind of a callback to what happened in the very beginning. Yeah. Is that, I want to assume just another. Yeah, another play, another another cramp.
Well, everything is a learning experience at this point for a young team. So the coach will say, okay, things didn't go our way. The officials weren't working with us in that third quarter. We still had opportunities, and uh, we got to take advantage of them in future games. Definitely have to, and this will be a learning experience for them. This will bring them together as a team. I think as for Episcopal, they have to be on the other side of saying, you know what, our first half was not good, but we built on it on the second half. So let's look at what we did in the second half, build upon that. And St. Andrews has to just build upon what they did in the first half. I think the thing that impressed me the most was that goal line stand here just a, m a moment ago. Yes, yep. they finally punched it in, but it took them fourth down against a defense that was totally gassed. They've yep. been out there in this heat all afternoon. Yeah, they've and been on the field. They have not been able to get off the field. Right. And, and their still offense almost got the stop. <laughs> and their, but their offense has been sitting on the sidelines, and that's not what you want. Jake Campbell in at quarterback, the freshman. One, two receivers wide left, one to the near side. Dropping back. Pressure coming. Fires over the center. That ball is in traffic and batted away. Good job downfield by Tucker Robertson to poke that ball away. Stops the clock with 43 seconds left. Nobody cramped up, so we'll get two plays back to back here. All right. I can't remember the last time we had that in the game. I'm going to receive a wide left two to the near side. Dropping back, looking downfield again. Good protection, fires over the middle. Got him wide open, caught for a first down to the 45-yard line. Nice pitch and catch to Aiden Key. He's had a nice game for the Highlanders. He really has. You got to look at who's been having a great game tonight and definitely, most definitely, try to get them involved. St. Andrews up to the line quickly. They stop the clock to move the chains. Now the clock's rolling again inside of 30 seconds to go. Dropping back. Hit as he throws it. Caught again by Key at the 32-yard line. See if they take another, a timeout here. Another really big rugby scrum when he caught it. 16 they, seconds left. Looks like they're going to try to get up there and either spike it or get another playoff. Nice job by Jake Campbell staying in there. Took a shot and still delivered a strike. Absolutely. Clock rolling again. 10 seconds. Could be the final play. Dropping back. And holding. And Campbell's going to go down with a sack. One second. They'll just run it off. That'll probably be the final play of the game because they'll have the 10-second runoff. And that will do it. So an intriguing game here this afternoon as uh, football returns to St. Andrews Episcopal School. Your final score, 28 to 11. The Episcopal School of Dallas Eagles fell behind 11 to nothing. Come back and get the win. Final thoughts here, Joshua? Yeah. Uh, I think this was a very good game for both teams. However, I think it was Episcopal in the second half that really capitalized on it. They used their plays. They used everything that they had in the first half, everything that didn't work in the first half, and they absolutely made it. And for St. Andrews, definitely keep your head up. This was a very good starting point for you, but no problems. It'll be all right, even after a few controversial calls. <laughs> so 28 to 11, congratulations to the Eagles. Hope they have a safe trip back, and uh, football is back at St. Andrews. Enjoy the rest of the season. Again, our next broadcast will be on September 9th on Thursday night as the JV squad from across the street from Regents comes over here to Beck Stadium, and we'll have that game for you here on Vibe Live as well. Thanks to uh, Coach McCrary and the staff here at St. Andrews for all the hospitality. Joshua, good working with you. And, good working uh, with you. We'll see you again here soon. All right. Thank you very much. My name is Merle Bertrand. Thanks to the Coach Les Clary, our QA back at the Vibe Live studios, our technical director, Sina Vincott and all the good folks over at Vibe Media. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you next time right here on Vibe Live. Good night, everybody.